there's such a vast uh, difference from interior decorators, interior designers, architects and stuff like interior designers actually deal with even, you know, paneling with partitions with probably breaking down a wall. Mm. But interior decorators is more of like, you know, just furniture and, and curtains and stuff like that. So that which is why people don't don't understand the difference here. Like in Dubai, people get that like because there's so much going on and it's so quick. So people want stuff in a hurry, but yeah, it's like, you know, people are relaxed. They see it in there, like, okay, fine, I want a couch, start off with the couch or they save up that money and, you know, probably buy the couch first. Then they base everything on that couch. Uh, it was good. I thought it probably will, it will help out in a lot of stuff. I think because Bahrain is a lot of word of mouth. So to like get out there, it's. Um... I mean, what's 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 great about being in the Middle East in general is that you get to see what worked in the West. Yeah. And then you can take True. the best ideas. Yeah. And mm-hmm. A B test it. True. Right. So yeah. you don't you don't have any of that time spent or investment that you would need necessarily to figure out how a podcast situation will work or yeah. content or DJing or anything True. else. Yeah, True. Right. Um, can you look up, uh, Dan, because I, I quote this way too often. Uh, if I've seen further than any man, it, it's because I stood on top of giants. Or st- if I see, uh, There we go. I'm still on the shoulders on top of giants. And it was by... It wasn't Mark Twain. It was Isaac Newton. Mm. Yeah. So I, I, try to, I try to practice that. Nice. Yeah, so tell me about the DJ world. Um, For me, it was, I think I've never had the chance to actually adapt to one place. Mm. Because, so I was born and brought up in Bahrain. And then by like eighth standard, I moved to Oman. And that's when my dad got a better opportunity there. And uh, we started doing a lot of, I would say, shows for like weddings and royal, like royal flight in Oman. And it was things like that, which were, which were just for like New Year's or any special corporate events and stuff like that. But um, I think that's where I actually started getting more into it because I used to see how much my dad used to struggle. And I've seen my dad actually do shows on like Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night. So he would actually like cover that plus have a full time job. Jesus. Yeah. So it was, um, I mean, I always look up at him for that and uh, he's been from from everything from buying his own sound to handling his own you know equipment and uh there was a time i think there was a club called called Yangon's club in mm. manama i don't know if it's uh, i mean they've shut down now and they used to have this thing called a bandra fair which was um it's something that's mm. very well known in in india in mumbai and uh he used to play from like 10 in the morning till late night till like two o'clock in the morning and he used to be on his feet the entire time just like one dj for that night but fuck you so know. we used, i mean we were kids that time so for us it was it was like great seeing your dad up there but not actually understanding what he's going through yeah and it having cds and just cases like he used to have like you could say at least half of your counter yeah and a depth but it was just um cds and he would actually like label his cds and know which tracks and which disc so he would pull that out from like you know the disco hits to like your banana boat song to like things like that back in those days and have bollywood and different types of tracks but um that's incredible yeah so for him to do that it was uh we never understood the pressure so till till date i would still say like my dad to handle the crowd like he knew what song to play next like now you see a lot of djs that just match up they as long as their bpms are matching they're more than happy to play the track yeah, 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 yeah. But they yeah, yeah. don't really care of what's actually happening on the dance floor. Sure. So that's why I did try to bring in, like nowadays you don't find retro a lot. And that's what we've started doing now. We've started doing a lot of retro. Uh, Bollywood, there's just one DJ that is well known in Bahrain. That's uh, DJ Nirmal, I think. And um, we just decided that, you know, probably we should do something new and bring something new to the market. So there's a, there are two other friends of mine who are DJs as well. And that's when we got together and decided to do Retro Night. And, okay. Uh, we did that at Mikasa, the first one, which was, so Mikasa was a place that was like, it, it was always empty. We would be like the only guest. And it was a 
friend of ours who has a really well to do go and restaurant called nice spice close to uh, i think i know it. 21 yeah. yeah so he he's like so happy with that place but he's like the minute i started mikasa it's it's dead and were they had, serving booze at mikasa yeah. and still dead and still dead it's just next to bangalore pub and nakaya and so ah uh, okay yeah. maybe too much competition so, on that yeah. stunt yeah so he was he was just desperate he's like i don't know what i'm supposed to do and uh, that's when we were thinking that that might be an opportunity for us to to do it and uh, they have a lovely courtyard at the back and we said you know what let's just do retro night and we started selling tickets and i think initially we sold around 20 tickets at what price 5 bd at 5 bd and 8 bd okay and uh, we were like okay fine you know but and at least someone will come in we hit a crowd of 170 people that night and it was just walking crowd Jesus. And we were surprised because we, like, we didn't even put it out there. <laughs> so we were quite shocked that now we're doing one on Friday, which mm. is the volume two he wants to do. So now we're doing the retro night. So for us, each thing that we do is a different theme. We don't want it to be like where you're in a club and, you know, because now when going to clubs, you can't go with your girlfriend. You can't go with your wife or something. It's like Jafar is just, you know, a whole different vibe now. You go to places where it's like. Okay. I I'm not in the clubbing scene so yeah got to yeah. tell me about so this for like, sure. What clubs were before like going to Garfields and stuff. Before, okay. Back in the day it's uh it's so different now like you come to Jafar and it's just you know a Nothing. lot of crap going on. Okay. In the clubs and you 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 know that you're not safe there or you're into fights or you're into and it's like people just doing that with you. So you're eventually even if you go as a group of friends we it's always where the girls don't feel safe or they don't feel comfy in the place. and that's what we wanted to change we wanted to get that back into certain places so i think that's where we actually got our followers from and it was um, it was a big change for us when we had that night the amount of people that approached us and i got shows at uh, british club i got shows at rugby club and uh, it, it just worked out I, i'm surprised that people are going out and like 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 doing bad touch and yeah. uh and having fights while having like Rasputin and yeah, like true. other retro music. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I feel like that's the right vibe. Yeah, for, very for, true. Yeah. I mean, if you're having like gangster rap or something like that, <laughs> on, then, sense, yeah. right? I'd be like, okay, true. you know, that's influentiation of going on. <laughs> yeah. Because from one of my DJs in Birmingham, uh, a mate of mine, he told me that at their place, they banned playing certain songs. Uh, for example, uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Um I think another one was when the bodies hit the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um because it was a rock club. Yeah. And he he was telling I think some songs from Metallica and I think Marilyn Manson was also banned. Sure. He said it, the the crowd was just going too mental. Yeah, true. There are, there are many people who I mean it affects them in different ways. I think even in Bangalore it happened when I was playing then um we just played the song We Will Rock You. Yeah. And that was like the so I wanted to end the night with that song. Uh-oh. And it was the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the lights came on and we saw people just going crazy. There were fights taking place, there were people running in and out of the club. And I was just like, why? Like it, it was I never played that song after that. <laughs> I was like I, cursed. It's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a big change for me and I was like never again. But uh yeah, I think um I think in like in places like in Oman you don't have a very big variety of clubs and stuff that you can actually play at and i think once you're as you're set as a resident dj there then it's only like international artists or stuff that would actually come down and so your growth in oman wouldn't be as much but in bahrain it's it's very quick and i so, think it's like a mini dubai really yeah because in dubai you have like a wide variety of options mm. but in uh, in bahrain you're just like You, you as long as people know you and you have followers because i think that's what people look at they, they the first thing they look at is not your music they look at how many what people, people you can, can bring in through the door right so yeah. i think that's where it's kind of difficult even for startup djs to to get up and do something and and i've actually heard a couple of startup djs who play really well and they just stuck because they've they've been brought in from india or from from dubai and stuff and they just they don't know where to start off from. So so let's let's get into this then. Yeah. Uh, say hypothetically, right? Yeah. I just put on my hat. I'm saying I want to be a DJ today. Yeah. I got no crowd. I got I just flew in from yeah. Bangalore. I just flew in from Dubai, wherever, sure. right? Yeah. What are, what are my first next steps? I would say a few if I think now a lot of people have the whole SoundCloud page and have a lot of as long as they have a good uh, social media page. I think that's what people look at first like the mm. minute I found, like if I found out about uh, DJ Whiskey for example 
that was the first thing I did because when they told me that my lineup is with these three or four DJs, that was the first thing I checked because I need to know my competition. Okay. And I actually oh, you see them as competitors. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Which is yeah, okay. which is I think, and that's that's where you actually learn a lot more because I think even as as a DJ, you're never the best. There's always something that someone will do better. Mm. And uh, I think for me, like I learned a lot just watching. Like I don't know how to scratch. That's one thing I. I don't have the technique in it and I don't think I have the patience to learn it either. But that's something like I would love to do. But again, my line is on hip hop. So there are a lot of people who do R&B and hip hop and stuff. And for me, it was more of how's an EDM and uh, going back to retro and stuff, which is so I just do it to based on the crowd, I think. But if you as competitors, I think the, the I don't look at them in a way like I feel a little lower. But I, I just look at it as a learning experience to try and do something new and to, you know, get up there. Because a lot of people don't really understand the technique of scratching in Bahrain. Yeah. I think it's just more of as long as your songs are good and, you know, the crowd is on the floor, people are out and about and they're doing their stuff. That's, I think it was just that. It wasn't like, you can say I've never felt threatened by anyone. I don't think by any DJ. Okay, but that's not anywhere near my question. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just saying like even like yeah. co competition wise, I don't think it would be like. You so I should go to a, like I'm just landed right today. Yeah. I should go to like some DJ like I should look up on Instagram what are the hottest bars or yeah. hottest clubs. Yeah, I go there and then to I'll a place that has crowd. Crowd, yeah, yeah, and then I'll go and talk to the barkeeper. I'll be yeah. like, yo, do you have your manager here? You know, sure. I want to like introduce myself. Yeah. I'm a DJ. Yeah, right. And then you're 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 giving that that manager being like, sure. here's my set. These are yeah. my music sounds. Blah 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 yeah. blah. Do you think they're going to be open to giving you a chance, or they're going to look at it and be like, listen, son. <laughs> You got no followers. Nobody knows you. True. I think, yeah, I think they would base it on your followers and stuff. Yeah. I mean, there are many clubs that always have their regular walk-in crowd and, uh, or they're usually packed. Like now in Jafar, I think there are probably a handful of clubs that are always full, be it on a weekday or weekend or anything. So I think those are the places where people should actually hit first. Okay. Because I know like in, in Dubai and stuff, there's always a trial and error that they check. They actually make you perform in front of them for like an hour or so mm. and then they see how well you're doing at an empty place yeah oh god so, that would yeah. be like <laughs> weird <laughs> so they yeah, actually do that it's <laughs> annoying it's just and you and the club owner right, yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, i like actually goes I like to that. Yeah, actually goes to that like we did a show i think recently at uh, at studio nine which is was the old hard rock cafe at exhibition road and they wanted to do their one year anniversary and uh, we thought okay fine you know give it a shot so it was a it was a challenge for us to actually see if we could get in crowd and we started off they wanted to do a sundowner so we wanted to start off from five mm. and from five to one there were like 15 people five to one in the morning there were just 15 people and then luckily their place was open till it's supposed to be for 24 hours but i think they shut by six and from one o'clock the crowd just came in and it was just like a whole after party scene and they were packed and we were surprised. We didn't even start. We, we were just like, forget the tickets, just bring them in. Because we got so bored of standing and playing that long, just three DJs. And um, it was, a, it was, I think, the most tiring night of mine. But I loved it. Like, I went to sleep happily and just, you know, woke up the next morning, gave a call to the other DJs. And I was like, can you believe what just happened? Oh, so where, do you, where does your profitability come from? Is it from selling the tickets? It's for us, yeah. As of now, we mostly do it on tickets. But mm -hmm. if it's, uh, that's if we are hosting the event. Mm -hmm. But uh, if the venue is ready to just have an event and, you know, put us up uh, on probably a poster or something, then we just take a fixed prize and then we go ahead with it. Okay. So I think that's the only thing. And I, I feel like, so I did play for, there's a company called Clockwork. I don't know if you know them. They do the Jazz Fest. Okay. So he, uh, Jude, had actually got me down to BIC for the F1 because I was working in the company that used to do a lot of their branding. And he got me on board. Like I think I was playing for a wedding on a Friday. And then he calls, on a Thursday. Yeah, and then he calls me and he's like, uh, Ben, we need a DJ for the paddock on Friday. And I was like, yeah, okay, fine, no problem. So I was there for three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I just love that experience. It was uh, beautiful. I mean, I, I, I don't think I've been into a club in the last 10 years or so. Oh. That's how long it's been. Wow. So we're, we're totally <laughs> opposite ends yeah. of the spectrum. Yeah. Very true.
Yeah. It's, it's, um, I mean, it's a very different vibe from like what I used to do before. Because in Bangalore, there's a lot of illegal stuff that people do there. Mm. And uh, you find so, that in every club, yeah. though. No, but I think in, in Bangalore, it's very different because their, their music is different. They, it was the first time I heard of uh, of DNB. It's called drum and bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I... <laughs> oh I, I, I haven't been in a club, see, but still there's some Ten years music. Back. Yeah. <laughs> and, I know uh, it was dubstep yeah. and stuff like that, right? It I'm was, in the know with the yeah, kids. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and I walked in then. Uh, it was an outdoor club. And um, I, it was the first day I landed. And I reached and I see people on a completely different level. And I freaked out because mm. it was just them moving their heads from left to right within their own zone. Mm. And I sit at the back with a glass of beer and just looking like, do I fit in? Or is this like, what if I was in that DJ's place? But that guy was actually, he was, he was playing really well. Like, Did, what was he, was it like a lot of trans shit or like, as not trans as in like transsexual, like trans as in like Like music. trans also has a lot of, uh, you'd say, I would say vibes and treble to it. Yeah. but. DNB was like just bass, so you're you're actually waiting for something to happen or at least a drop. Sure, <laughs> but it's not there. It's just people just moving to I, the beat. I, and I, I was in a I was in a club once in Germany. We're going years back again, and it was called Red Door because okay. it was a red door and you had a knock on it. All right, and then they look at you and then they let you in. Maybe they yeah. won't. True. And so inside was everyone was on DMT, and I. It was a, the strangest music I've ever heard in my life. It was mm. like a mixture of lounge yeah. music with with dubstep. Oh, it was really, <laughs> really bizarre. Yeah, true. It was it was like can you imagine like Skrillex almost, but but like almost like in jazz form. I've yeah. never heard of. Yeah, it was it was so weird. I, I forgot what the genre is called, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. I mean, nowadays it's. Uh, I think music is just. It's reached different levels now. So what, uh, what's going on in the club scenes here? Like, is, is, is DMT still a big thing? Are people still in coke? I mean, I've actually been, <laughs> I've still been waiting for, I, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to go into a place that actually has house music or okay. has proper EDM music. Because that's what I used to love working with and uh, love playing. But um, I've never had that. Like any club I've gone to here is usually hip hop and R&B. Okay. And it's, so even our crowd generally likes house and deep house, but you don't get a wide variety of that. It's, I think there is a club in C for so that my friend was mentioning, but okay. I'm not too sure how it works out. I remember in London, one of the one one of the big four. Um, I don't remember which one. Maybe it was Goldman Sachs or somebody like that. Okay. So, so, anyways, it was an employee there, and they told me that in their office they have a special room called the Coke Room. Okay. That is well, that is just to 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 light them up. Shit. Oh, it is what it is. Yeah, true. It's, 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 I mean, in, in there are areas in the UK where it's more abundant than alcohol. Yeah. So again, it blows my mind. It blows exactly. my mind. Okay. So, um, from the music scene, yeah. have you never thought about opening your own club? Oh, all the time. What are you worried the about time. the finances? Yeah. It's mainly the finances. Because I got told and tell me if this is wrong. Yeah. I got told that if you own a, an alcohol license in Bahrain, yeah. You're, you legally can print money. Really? In the sense um, of like, yeah. you're, 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 you're going to do, yeah. You're going to do well. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. is that true or is that bullshit? I mean that, I would still say it depends on how you run it because there's so many places that have the alcohol license, but they don't know how to, to market their, their place or market their ideas and stuff. They, they just stuck on like, okay, we have a bar, we have a bar. Like I've gone personally from the cheapest bar to the most expensive places mm. and I mean, like, I think at the end of the day, it's it's the name that gets you around. And you uh, think so? I think so. I mean, like, Wranglers has been there for so long, and what Wranglers was before to what it is now. I know, like, now it's just if you say it to guys, to a bunch of guys, like, let's go to Wranglers, they always in. But when you say it to your mixed group and stuff, the girls always say straight up, no, like, let's go to Trader Vic's. So for us, it's like. Two different, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> those are expensive <laughs> girls. Yeah, <laughs> but then again, as I told you, they feel safe and they feel like you know we need to just relax and be by ourselves. We don't always have to be protected, in their words. So, I think that's how it is now. Because and if you go to Wranglers, people look at you in a different way, mm. and uh, that's where people are actually, you know, now Adlia is getting packed. You go there on Thursdays and Fridays, 
you, you can't drive in. Yeah, 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 park yeah, yeah. really way out. And that's something I never saw at Lira as before. Well, they've got lanterns, yeah. um, right? They've got lanterns, they've got Akaya, they've got Mesa. Yeah. They've got Torino. And they've got, now they opened up a new, like, like Irish pub. Irish village, yeah. And there, now, yeah. There's two of them now. Yeah. There's and now the, JJ's has opened there as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that whole area is just like, people are actually parking near the post office and then walking all the way down. Jesus yeah. Christ. And But it's a safe place and it's a good place. And I think the crowd you get there is way better than from the Jafer side now. Because so. the Jafer side was always, you know, like Goras and, yeah. and Americans and stuff True. like that, right? And now it's all just being pushed this side. Really? Which is, which is a big change for us. Because in Jif- because in, in Adlia, I've never, like, I hardly ever see like like a Gora, a white person. It's always, you know, either Middle yeah. Eastern or True. Asian. It's yeah. There's not like... Yeah. I, I don't even see any like like Thai or Filipino or Chi- Chinese yeah. girls, right? That's all in Jafer. That's all is, in Jafer. Which yeah. is why a lot of the crowd now in Jafer is just like weirder. Yeah, <laughs> they're, not, they're not weirder. <laughs> it's like you you know you're bound to getting into something wrong if you're in Jafer. The most interesting group of people I think I've ever seen in Bahrain mm-hmm. is you know the Royal Golf Club. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you don't need a membership, by the way, if you ever want to go play golf there. I think yeah. I don't know how much you, how expensive it is. It, it's not cheap. I think it's like okay. twenty BD, yeah. um, just to hit the driving range. Yeah, but I it, I saw the most like authentic, I guess is the right word, Japanese people I've ever seen. Yeah. Like whatever in your mind would yeah. would you think what a Japanese <laughs> golfer would look like? It is exactly that: the whole socks, the shorts. Wow. <laughs> everything i was like what the fuck is this it was just a group of them and uh, even like their their wives were there too and they were like they were wearing these huge sun hats and like these shaders because yeah. the japanese like and a lot of asians yeah. they don't want to get tanned right <laughs> do they do you don't know that I, I didn't know they get tanned at least yeah they don't want like they, they they like wow. for, especially for like the japanese and stuff like that yeah. they they and they like pristine they like being like like, like a pearl <laughs> right yeah that's true actually now that you think about it, <laughs> yeah, right? Sure, yeah. Have you never seen a Filipino walking around with a like with a with an umbrella? A umbrella? Yeah, I have. I have seen. It. But yeah. I thought it's you know probably because of heat stroke or something that they don't want to get. <laughs> you never know how. I mean, it's because uh, I've never seen any Filipino get tanned or actually sit out. You know, I mean, they do exist. Yeah, they do exist. <laughs> Yeah, you do see them because nobody wants to be mistaken for them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they cut that out. <laughs> what you think the Filipino my, community my is best come friend, running after us? My best friend was a Filipino. Oh, uh, was what happened? He switched. He got married. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's. Um, I mean, we're still in touch and stuff. We used to play basketball and everything a lot, but uh, yeah. It's. I think once you get married, things just change slowly. Is he still in Bahrain or is he? Fucked he's off? still in Bahrain. He's still in Bahrain. Yeah. But he lives off in Sitra, so we don't, we barely meet up. And, yeah. It's life, innit? Yeah. What about yourself? Are you going to stay here in Bahrain? Planning to, uh, probably for another four or five years and then move out. Where do you want to move to? Trying to see either Canada or New Zealand. Okay. But uh, I mean... Dan, Dan is with you. He's from Sri Lanka and he, he's, he's desperate to go to Canada. He's from Sri Lanka? Yeah. Wow. Am I correct, Dan? Yes, sir. <laughs> there we go. That was that was my school in Muscat actually. So after I moved from Sacred School over here and I went to Oman, I was in Sri Lankan school because they were doing the Cambridge syllabus. Okay. So I had like a lot of Sri Lankan friends and I like that that school was so small mm. and like everyone, it was just like family. It wasn't like, because I've seen it Sounds like a there. nightmare to me. Re- no, really. I'm, I'm not, I mean, even I thought that when I had to wear, you know, Sky blue uniforms pants. and stuff. <laughs> it was like sky blue pants and a white shirt. And then I went then. And when you come in from like Sacred School, which is like a whole mixed group, a mixed crowd, and then you go to Oman and you have Bangladeshis and Sri Lankans and you know Indians, and then you're just like, okay, fine. You know, probably it'll be fine, it'll be different. But I think out of everything, they just had a basketball court, and that's where I actually started getting into basketball a lot. And um, they hold and we like. The whole school would be on that on that field, just on one basketball court. <laughs> you, I mean, you can make it sound as nice as you want to, buddy. But I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I like the idea of being like the like like uh, like behind being behind the curtain. I, I don't <laughs> like people like being like, oh, yo, that's how it. Oh, I am. <laughs> like, I'd rather that nobody knows me. I can just get on with my day, put my headphones in, don't have to say yeah. hi back, don't have to like nod. Yeah, I can just true. be like, <laughs> no, because I mean, there are schools where you. 
I'll probably see you today and then I'll see you after uh, I'll see you a week later. You know? Exactly. That's yeah. a dream. That's yeah, a dream. True. That's a dream. That's true. But I think I, I mean, it was a change for us. Cause I, I used to do that, by the way, because my big school, whenever people yeah. come up to me and try to have a discussion and be like, oh, we like we met like a whatever class yeah. or we like we just had lunch and stuff like that. I'm like, no, sorry, mate. That was a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. <laughs> and it was actually you. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't got time for your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a fact. I mean, I mean, it was it was scary initially. I mean, uh, I when we went in for a few. So my brother and I went in for a few of the admission uh, requirements of the tests and stuff. But we would put like, yeah, but they got purposely they need, fail it just yep. so that we didn't want to get into that school. Oh, okay. And it was that bad because, I mean, they were bigger schools, but they just felt a little weird so this school actually changed a lot it brought a lot out of me and uh, I think because I used to be the shy type sure. I used to always be behind I think that was the first time I started dancing the first time I started getting into sports a lot and um, yeah and then I moved to Dubai uh, to Manipal University in Dubai for interior designing hmm. and that's where I was like I think if I wasn't in Sri Lankan school it wouldn't have helped me so do you feel like if you would have instead of spent your time doing interior design and all that aspect of your life, you would have yeah. been further as a DJ? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I actually would. But I still love my line. I think like that's something I've looked at from like seven years old. I used to watch it on BBC, but they had something called design rules. Okay. And I thought, okay, this might, you know. That's way too gay like for me. I can't do that kind of stuff. I'm really? out. Yeah. <laughs> now that's something I... I started watching and I fell in love with that episode and I think that was the first one I started watching. This is this is one of my proudest moments, I think, and, and I will tell you my my ideal design mm. hotel. Oh. My ideal design is, is is when a girl comes in and goes, This feels so cold. <laughs> <laughs> I have no family pictures yeah. up. I have nothing like that up. Right? I, I like it. That you, walk in, you feel a little uneasy because everything is like glass and steel. Yeah. Right? That's my ideal oh my design. God. Yeah, that's true, actually. Uh, uh, my place yeah. is meant to feel homely. No need for wood. Get out of that shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of people who actually prefer that. I mean, I think once once you actually have a family of your own, then you're things probably might change. Yeah, then it's yeah. the wife's decision, it's not wife's yours. Decision. Yeah, yeah. It's just your money sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I've, I've faced difficulties on that line too. So it's come to interior designing between husband and wife, which is two different ends. And it's like one will want black and oak wood, one will want white and gray. So to actually get in between both of that and like I've had projects running for like 11 months because of that. Jesus. Just to, to drag it on. So, so how does that budgeteering work? Do they do you get paid per hour on the consulting, or do you get paid as no, a so fee at the end? No, so we give a design end? fees, and, okay. uh, and then we do just uh, it's before in, in India it used to be free consultation. Okay. So, and that's because we're making a good amount of money on the furniture because we actually have an e-commerce base. Uh, I used to be in an e-commerce base, but so you sell your f your furniture internally yeah. out, yeah? Yeah. So in that we used to add in all our costs. Mm. So. I remember there was a time there was a bed that we used to sell for around 32,000 uh, rupees. Which is... Uh, uh, 30. Wait, 33,000 you said, yeah? Yeah. 33,000 is 3,300 3, pounds, yeah. which would be 15,000, 1,500 BD, something like that, I think. Nope. Yeah. Can okay, you double check my math, Dan? 33,000. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be around 200. Yeah. 200. What? A, what a? 150 BD. 150. So yeah. I got a decimal wrong. I got a yeah. zero wrong. So that's how it used to work out. And I remember uh, they had a rug of 30,000. Okay. So I remember when I. Is that a lot to, for a rug or is that a little for a rug? It's, a, it's, I would say it's like, okay, if you're, if you're having your cheapest bed as 150 BD. Sure. And when a client wants to buy that and wants to keep a rug. Then yeah. your cheapest rug is 150 BD. Okay. So why would you want to buy So you sleep on the rug. rug. Yeah. So I remember that uh, I actually had an argument with my manager because of that. And uh, he, because the client asked me, she's like, so I'm going to pay 32,000 for my bed. And I'm going to pay 30,000 for a rug that I want to put under my bed. And then she said that I'd rather put a bed under my bed. Sure. <laughs> 
And I had nothing to say to that for the first time in my life. Okay. I, But you, you could have also said it's going to make that 1,500, 150 BD look twice as sense because it's already that rug. <laughs> But, and this was the couple that was going on for like 11 months. So they were pinpointing at everything. Like even if you, and then our company would like say, okay, we're giving you, you know, 30% discount or Just 40% discount. leave. Yeah. And then that was the next question that, oh, so if you're giving us a 40% discount, we can imagine your profit margin. And it's just like, you can't even argue with them. Yeah. So, but you're like, we got to eat, yeah. right? We, <laughs> we got to eat, right? This is, I, I, because this is one of the things like, I get from the, from the textile shop. I get that a lot when they're like, oh, but I can get it from China and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm like, get it from China. Yeah. Sure. Right. Exactly. And, and in fact, um, one of our customers like came up and said like, no, this is way, way too expensive. Right. Yeah. And said, I said, okay, no problem. And I, I actually went on Alibaba and I looked at, the, I'm happy to say, that. uh, we'll see. <laughs> Right. Um, I went on Alibaba and I looked up for textiles and then I looked mm. for the worst reviews yeah. once and then I just copy and paste and said, here are a bunch of options I've used in the past. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> they contacted me about like, I think two months later being like, well, I never got my order. This didn't happen. I'm like, oh. well, you didn't order it for me, did you? Yeah, exactly. Right. So, True. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I gave you the, ch the cheapest <laughs> option available. Oh my God. And then you're like, your service sucks. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Son, you did it for me, right? Very <laughs> true, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, there's... I think, yeah, if, if it wasn't for <clears throat> two years, I think I would have actually focused a lot into music and stuff. Because I, I did have a couple of friends in Dubai who, who are still there, who are still doing production, and they've reached heights. Like, they used to have studios of their own, and they used to give classes, they used to have the latest uh, gear and, and COVID everything. killed them. Is that what you're trying to say? COVID didn't actually kill them. I think they just uh, decided to like let go of all their office work and stuff. And then they just took this as a full time thing. And there were like two or three DJs who actually got in together and opened up a studio and they're doing well till now. You know, I, it's, it's a tricky business DJing because in, in an ideal world, what I would like to tell you is you buy one of these cameras, these streaming yeah. cameras, yeah. right? We, for the people asking, it's Blackmagic Studio Pro that we use okay. for recordings. Um, they're not expensive. It's, they're like, I, they're around 700 BD, okay. which, which, you know, for camera gear isn't a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it, uh, you know, like a Sony point and shoot yeah. can cost more than double that. Yeah. And let's say you throw in a lens, you get some storage, cables, whatever, you're about yeah. just under 900. Yeah. Right. Sure. You get one of these, you put it next to your, your mixing deck, maybe yeah. get your iPhone and, and, and point it at the, the switcher board yeah. so you can switch like camera angles. True. Okay. And then you just stream it on Twitch. Yeah. Or that kind of service. The only problem is I don't know whether or not your content is going to get flagged because of copywriting of, of copyright. music. Yeah, true. But I, I, I th I, there must be a way around it. I think there is because there are a lot of DJs who do that nowadays, I think. So, I, th I think that yeah. would be a really cool idea, especially yeah, for you, true. because at least you're already doing the work. Yeah. Right? So if you do the recording, then yeah. you can grow your, your reputation yeah. that way. Yeah, true. Yeah, I think it sounds like a good thing, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? True. Especially it's if you want to be like your other friends in Dubai who, who yeah. like focused on this full yeah. time. That's, uh, I think because I, I think they had the time to actually like get out of everything else and just, you know, focus on music itself. And I think they do really well. I mean, being it in, as I said, the variety of clubs that you have in Dubai, it's, it's insane. Like mm -hmm. I was there for, I think, six years. I couldn't, I think I've not even covered 20 clubs and they have a crazy amount of clubs. Like in Oman, I got bored of <laughs> like, which club to go to next. Because eventually you're you're going to the same place over and over again. So what would be the the for you currently? What would you think is like your top ability to 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 bid, or tell us the ticket number that you think is the highest that you can sell, mm. and get people in the door? Like 10 BD, 5 BD. What what are we talking I about? I think nowadays every. I think I would say 10 BD. 10 BD. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when you unless you have your unlimited you know beverages and like your brunches and stuff, which is. Uh, I would say an advantage to many people. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. You can definitely sell it for 50 BD yeah. if, so, if it's like unlimited brunch or unlimited yeah. alcohol, right? Exactly. Because I think, yeah, that's what happened at Artotana, I think, when we went for brunch. I think it was 33 BD and it was unlimited alcohol and food. Or mimosas, said, unlimited yeah. mimosas or something. And they like had that. great, they had a great variety of food. It was like a lovely spread from, 
Arabic to Indian to to Thai to everything. And it was just uh, God, perfect. I can't was, imagine how much headache that is to manage. <laughs> it was. It actually was. Okay, because you, you just the security alone to deal with yeah. like the people are you know going a little too no, but wild. It wasn't that bad. Like I think they handled it really well because they had a three piece uh, Latina band, and it was it was just you know there wasn't like a DJ and there wasn't it was just crowd that wanted to come in and just you know relax and be by the pool or be by I mean have a lovely view of the the seaside and stuff. But it was I think it was very uh, we did it for my parents anniversary in fact and okay and that just as our whole family but we loved it we we sat there the entire time they had oysters they had mussels they had so you're you know you're making good use of your your time and your money so it was uh it was a good experience for that so i've always wanted to do a brunch in bahrain is there any like pure dance clubs here in bahrain there are i think uh, can you type in uh dan ministry of sound into google images not too sure if they have that yet. So just so you know what I'm, what I'm like, when I mean like pure clubs, I mean something like, like just on Google images. Yeah. They have one in London and they have one in Birmingham, if I'm not mistaken. Like that kind of a situation. I think I experienced it. I experienced this once in, um, I think it's called Rockies now. Okay. But it was called Madness before. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if something like this, if there's enough population to support it, if it's something like this can even work, because that's a lot of people, right? I mean, that is at least, I think the, the club has normally upwards of a thousand people in it. Uh, can you choose any image and just so we can put it up and see it? It's a lot of people, that's right? A lot of people. I think I, they do have places like this, in fact. I, I, I had seen one, I'm not too sure of the name, but it's in Seif somewhere. Seif, yeah. okay. And I, mean, I was shocked about that, but a friend had told me about it and it was... Uh, There's a lot of weird places here though. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. like, like red rooms and yeah. that kind of like weird stuff. <laughs> There's a lot of kind of weird stuff. Like I think recently a friend messaged me and he told me, uh, he sent me a, a video of a place and he's like, man, this is some underground place. And I was like, in Bahrain. Mm. He's like, yeah, it's some underground place and it's, you know, so he sent me a video and I was like, why are you there? Because it looked really weird. I got to earn money. That's why I'm there, yeah. son. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there, yeah, he was just, uh, and then he told me like, you have to come down. And I was like, no way, I'm not going to do that. So he's like, why? Wow. I was like, I'm with my family. And that's oh, right. one thing I could do. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, probably I would just drop in and like see how the place is. But uh, I don't know. I, I think there are places that, are, that actually run this way. I mean, can you open the one with the DJ set? Yeah, the one down there. File Adobe Atmos at Ministry of Sound. Is that, I, I don't even, I can't even begin to understand what that means. I mean, I understand what Adobe Atmos mm -hmm. is, techni technically speaking, from how the speakers have to be positioned in a sure. room. Yeah. But I don't know if that even like matters for the DJ, <laughs> for, because I don't, oh. I don't know how the, how the output of that deck is. Okay, so generally what we do is, I mean, so, uh, for example, I won't take the name of the place, but I did, we did have a setup recently and um, it was a pool site. So they didn't actually cover the sound on all the, you always have to have a surround sound. And what they did was since our stage was set up by the pool, they had all our speakers just lined up and it mm -hmm. was, uh, and then we had, I think, two booth monitors, but it was just not enough because we could still hear it bounce off and affect us like on the stage. And we had to actually call in another two more uh, booth monitors and they had to get that and plug it in. So it does, because you'll always have a feedback from sure. something or the other. And sure. it's always an uh, echo. So for us, as when we DJ, we always follow either the tap of our foot or our bass. So the, I, I've been to this club and I can tell you that okay. the, the, the walls are, are almost spongy. Yeah. I mean, they are like super, super cushiony just okay. for that sound absorption. Sure, so, yeah. Right. And the, the sound is a little weird because you're used to almost like from old, from other clubs, they hear that like rib, re, yeah. reverb. Yeah. True. And because in it, there, you don't really hear any reverb other than a little bit from the floor that yeah. it bounces. Yeah. Right. True. But most like, but the foot, it's not like the floor is empty. Generally, yeah. there's like 100, 500, whatever amount of people there. Yeah. So their, their bodies absorb a lot of yeah. that true. sound. Right. Yeah. 
because I'm always interested in these kind of equipments. Obviously, people are listening it on on audio. You yeah. know, screw you, watch it on YouTube, yeah. uh, on video, or on on our website. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so uh, I, from from the deck, yeah. I can't. I guess the output from the deck what is a stereo, right? We have it as stereo. Yeah. Right. So we have the XLR cables that we use generally for uh, our output, and then for our booth monitors, it's through the jack. So, so it goes through the jack then, and then somehow it has to then re be recoded for surround sound, does it not? To no, surround so sound. So what we do that is all from the mixers and from the amps. So if we if we plug in our, uh, so it'll just have two XLR cables. Mm -hmm. So we link up our CDJs to the to your DJM controller, mm -hmm. the mixer, and then we take it from our mixers and stuff into our main mixer and amp. Okay. So you'll always have a stand like a standalone mixer and stuff for the surround sound. So can you so if you want to then mix for room, in theory, wouldn't you need then for example, if the room yeah. is like seven point one surround sound or whatever, okay. wouldn't that necessarily then mean that you your headphones would have to be seven point one surround sound in order to mix it then correctly? No, because no? that's a step yeah. The once you have as long as your booth monitors are connected and your headset is perfect, like most of them use the Pioneer the DJ. Uh, headset mm. and I think that's like it's more than enough to like actually handle it like I've seen people play with like I'm just talking about from a technicality yeah. perspective yeah. because it, it, it feels it feels mentally almost weird to me to imagine that if you're if you're if your end result is 7.1 because of your your your, your speaker build up and the set yeah. design right yeah. that if your headphones is simply st stereo then yeah. the sound that you're going to get from your headphones it's is going to be stereo, from, yeah. right? Yeah. And if it's set up at 7.1 headphones, then in yeah. theory, you should so. be able to hear it as how it would sound as somebody who's in the center yes. of that room. <laughs> 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 was, was that on purpose, Dan? That wasn't wrong sound. Oh, you Siri. So Siri agreed with me. They're like, yeah, yeah, he's, he's talking some real shit. <laughs> I wish I could no. tell, tell you that was set up. <laughs> oh my God. No, but um, yeah, I was saying like, cause we have uh, the boot control, uh, the boot monitor control on our deck usually. Mm -hmm. I mean, always, but um, that's where we can, con we can uh, configure it based on our headset as well. So we don't actually hear what y'all are hearing outside. Yeah. Uh, many times we've even like in Oman and stuff, they have glasses where you're actually inside. So you can't actually hear what the people are hearing outside, but then as long as you're playing and you have your booth monitors, you're actually listening to, which matches to your headset. Do, so, you, do you think you could do something here in Bahrain like silent disco? I think they've actually done it. I think there is a place that's done it, which yeah. is, uh, and they've had a couple of frequencies, but I, I don't think it's just the exact, uh, I, I, I think people aren't looking for that, you know? I don't know if people actually are because I didn't. I do know they've done it once, and I and I was surprised because I saw it recently. Because in Bangalore they do it a lot. Really? But yeah, in Bangalore they do it a lot. I f it feels weird to me almost in a sense. It is because I mean I find it weird even for the DJ. Right. Because <laughs> I, the, I, I just wonder. Well, how I mean, guess if their headphones are on, right? They're yeah. they're in the crowd as well, right? <laughs> and then many times they have like three to four DJs, so you just keep changing the frequency. So people are like different, you know. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> So you actually watch it and it's really weird. I mean, that's something I would never want to play for. Never. Really? I would never. I find it too silent. Do you do, you do any um, internet radio kind of stuff? I've not done it, no. Why? I've, I mean, I've not actually, to be honest, like I've been working a six day week. Sure. So for me, it's like, it's just a Friday that I have off. Sure. And then I, that's the day I spend with my family or I take up a show on Thursday night. And then on Friday night, and then so I'm caught up with that. Yeah, but it's like time, it, but. it's one a.m. somewhere in the world, right? It is, yeah. So if you come up home from work, let's say like seven, eight, whatever, I hit the bed. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> or I sit down to download music or something like that. So. Because if you if you but, could you could stream it, you could stream a deck, or you can stream yeah. a mix, right? Yeah. And and that's like to build that crowd, to build that yeah. following. No, I mean there are times I've done I've gone live on Instagram and stuff, but I've never actually like hit the uh, like. I mean, I've, I'm actually even off Facebook. Hmm. I barely use it. It's like, it's just there on my phone. I forgot my password. So there was a time like I didn't even have access to it till I had to, you know, get the forgot password thing and then realize that my India number is even closed now. So <laughs> there was no way of getting that done. 
So it took me a really long time to try and remember. You're the, one of the strangest men I've ever met because you look like a DJ, you talk like a DJ, but the le the thing you do the least amount is DJing. <laughs> <laughs> Even drinking Red Bull, it all fits. <laughs> no, for me it was like like I said, I just do it as a hobby. I don't, um, I can't, I don't see myself doing it every like an everyday thing. I don't see it. Um, I mean, I've, I've actually had people come and say like, you know, when are you going to play this song? When are you going to play that song? Like they know that they already know my list. Mm. So that's when I realized like even being at weddings, like we, we get booked a lot here in Bahrain for weddings. And um, that's from Indian crowd to, uh, to Sri Lankan crowd and stuff. And, and for us from Goans, we have like a very different kind of, um, we have the Goan Masala, we have, you know, songs from like our Bombay tracks, we have our English waltz, our jive, our cha-cha. So we even go back to that because that's what I actually learned from my dad. And um, like those are shows I look forward to more than when I play at, you know, a club or, or a pub. And how much, how much is these like wedding things paying? I think it's like oh, 200, 250. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, well, that's, uh, but I, yeah. I, I know a guy who, who was doing like wedding photography. Yeah. And he was telling me for events and stuff like that, he would, he would get paid 800. Yeah. So they do. Yeah. True. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what's, what's more important, the photographer or the DJ. If you, if you only had like, like X amount of capital to yeah. spend, which everyone does, true. how would you split it? I'd, I'd never thought that you would spend less on the DJ than you would do on the photographer. But then again, I mean, the photography is you're going to keep for life, right? That DJ exactly. is for that event, yeah. right? True. And that's what they, I mean, everyone looks back at that. No one looks back much at, at the DJ, at the DJ or yeah. the band, if there's a band also. That's also very yeah. true. Because I mean, nowadays it's all about so social media and posting stuff and having albums and, you know, like showing it to people that this was how my wedding was. I think like, um, I think even like recently they had the big Indian wedding. I, I don't know if you read about that. So that was definitely actually, not. Yeah. So that was actually a classmate of mine who had come down and um, I've not met him for like years. Mm. It was just because throughout the company that I was working at, we managed to get there to do their wedding decor and they set up and stuff. So we did all of that with them. And um, I think they also spent quite a lot and they had photographers come from out and it was just <laughs> to get, you know, their proper shots in Bahrain by Bahrain Bay and then come by to to golf hotel and golf convention center. And I think the second day was at Wyndham Grand. And uh, it was mainly their photographers that were just really important to them. They didn't care much about the music. So it's, yeah. It was, what are you going to do? True. What are you going to do? So I think that was what happened at the end of the day. It was no one actually goes back. I mean, people do talk about it like, okay, who played at your wedding or if they like now the past three weddings we've got is just because people were there for the first wedding. Mm. Eventually the next couple decided to get married and they're like, you know, we want to book you. Um, you were pretty good. Come over yeah. to our show. How much did it cost? So, 200 BD yeah. done. Let's and do it. And then they'll check with the other person. Like, okay. How much did he charge you? <laughs> yeah. So, so you're never going to be able yeah. to bid up. True. Okay. So, but then, I mean, now in the market, it's all increased. There's so much like, even if, cause I don't buy my own, uh, speakers and stuff. I, cause I don't have the place to keep it. And, uh, and it's always, I mean, cause I know my dad used to invest in sound and stuff, but then when we had to shift, it became a pain to like sell it off. True. And but I mean, yeah. it, you, the difference is when you, when you, when you buy something, you own it so you can always resell it and you can rent it. Right. Yeah. When you're renting something, you're always, yeah. have to be careful in handling yeah, it exactly because you never want to be banned. Yeah. No, that's a fact. But I mean, what I've experienced and I, I mean, I do have, uh, Thank God I have good contacts when it comes to, you know, renting sound and stuff. And uh, they've given me the best quality at the end. And it's not for like that much. I think they would charge me like 80, okay. 70, 80 BD, which is like six speakers, your amp, your mixer. And they send the people in to come and, you know, connect it. Connect and keep everything, everything ready for me. And I just take the console and I, and I play. So how much so, of, how much of your, 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 your income then or yeah. for your, the event goes then to equipment? 
No, so if they if they if the hall doesn't have the equipment, then generally yeah. I charge the client even. Okay, so product. so yeah. your ticket sales is always yeah, like money. Seven, yeah, yeah, you keep in. So as long, and I and I'm open with them. If it's if I'm paying eighty for the sound, I tell them straight up I'm paying eighty for sound. Well, aren't you making then? Aren't you technically then would be making more as a DJ then uh, than than as a full time yeah. designer? Um, in theory, if you get if you if if you get yeah, it's a break even question, it is. right? No, true. No, so, I mean you do I do get a lot like if in a month i do three or four shows i'm making good money in like four days compared to so you get one of my questions month. right yeah, it is that but then i always i mean you don't have the security family, yeah there's no security there's no i always believe in like a fixed income okay and then because you never know like by but by you know, chance something goes wrong or something goes you know or there's another dj that comes in sure or you have for example covid DJs were just stuck. There were so many people who had to sell their equipment because they had to just spend for them for themselves, and it was uh, it was bad. Because I know how many DJs who even left from Oman and Dubai and just go back home and then do nothing. And yeah, so, but hypothetically, if that if that furniture business is, or or Indusline yeah. business closed down, yeah. then, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's it's, it's it, that's such a dumb like I don't know. For mm. me, like the, this this is one of the things I I, I I get told a lot is like people making people making plans over things they have no control over yeah or working okay. jobs that they don't like but for you it's an exception of course because you yeah. like interior design yeah. right yeah. so so that's not the case with you but for a lot of people work jobs that they don't like that they don't like to not be successful in instead of taking a chance and doing something that you do like and trying to be successful <laughs> in right i mean it's like <laughs> what, uh, what? <laughs> no i mean because even like during COVID, I, I, I don't think our company was hit that bad because um, everyone was sitting at home eventually. And then people start thinking like, you know, they get fed up in their house. You know, like, how long can we sit at home? Maybe we should change something. So we actually started getting a lot of sales during that period compared to the times we, we didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then otherwise it was mostly events and exhibitions. But uh, interior design was like, I think it we got more, more sales when it came to, you know, people sitting at home and being stuck at home because of COVID. And um, luckily, I, I feel Bahrain didn't have many restrictions compared to several other places. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. places opened up like really quick. The restrictions were like, you know. I mean, in the UK, uh, uh, the restrictions were, I think, equally or maybe a little bit more tough. Yeah. But people didn't give a shit. They didn't give a shit. Really true. Uh, this is, it's not like, I mean, they, there's not like the, the legal system in, in Bahrain is a lot more structured than yeah. it is in places like the UK. Yeah. I remember like, like uh, middle of lockdown, they would only allow you to, to, to go for exercise for 15 minutes a day or something like that. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And uh, I remember being stopped multiple times by the police being like, this is your 15 minutes. And I was yeah. like, son, I just came out. I don't know what you're on about. Can you fucking leave me alone? Rachel. Not get too close. And then yeah. I would just be out all day. <laughs> 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 just be a rambler. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, people yeah. were chilling in the park. People yeah, were like, true. fuck off. <laughs> no, Wait, I love you're going to arrest me? You can't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It was, but it was I think jokes. they handled it well, you know. I mean, I mean, Bahrain, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Really well, because people in Australia, I have a lot of friends in Australia who were telling me that they, I mean, they were at home for like a really long time. Yeah, but that's because they Australia's got, government is fucked up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're trying to ban now people, like private citizens, to be able to be farmers. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. so most animal diseases in, in history have been yeah. caused by, by, by poor animal upkeep. And that's, I mean, they, they portray like, that's like this, the, the small farmer. That's the yeah. reason why the cow is getting mad cow. No, yeah. it's because of like fucking big enterprise or like, <laughs> fuck that. We'll, you know, we'll just feed, sure, we'll, yeah. yeah, we'll just feed our, like the old food with that small dean. We'll just give it to the pigs and the cows and <laughs> fuck it. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. I remember I saw a video online where, where they, they basically took like supermarket shelf products that are just expired yeah. and they just put it into a, to like, like like a, a a mixer okay with plastic with cupboard cardboard with everything Shit. just mixed it and then feed it straight to the to the feed oh my god yeah wow. you, do you i remember reading somewhere do you know that that on average you eat a credit card worth of plastic every week Shit. so on average you take a credit card <laughs> every week and start munching on it 
Shit. No, yeah. I didn't know that. It's it's it like like plastic like as a as a global thing is yeah. crazy and people don't care. They're not educated on it, you know. Yeah. It's it's it fucks up people's hormones and stuff like that. It makes men more women, more like women. Yeah, exactly. That's I, I think that's one of the reasons why why we're getting like all these like crazy stuff from the West. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. It's wild. So an interior designer, if, what do you tell what do you think about the studio? I fell in love with it when I first came. Shut out. the fuck up. I don't I believe did. that. Really? We have to lie sometimes. God, there we <laughs> go. I'm just kidding. There we go. No, but I did I did uh I did like the whole like when I walked in, I I wasn't sure if it, I was coming to an office or a house, and I think you've done you've done an amazing job with it. Shut the fuck up! I'm, I don't I'm, believe it. I'm serious. I fell in love with your chairs. Firstly, the yeah. chairs are beautiful. Your side tables are lovely. The bag of rice is good. Thank it's you very good. much, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't spill a secret. <laughs> End no, <of> that. <laughs> yeah, I mean the no, bag no. of rice was the idea of making sure that the table doesn't flip. Yeah. It turns out that the bag of rice doesn't do jack shit. <laughs> so it's <laughs> at least you don't run out of rice. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. I mean it's it's good. like two kilos or whatever each side. <laughs> we got yeah. a little plant going there on the side, you know. Nice, that's lovely. And uh, we're supposed to have a light working in that thing, but the light so. broke. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the bulb or is it just the... <laughs> it's empty inside. We oh, used to put like like an LED inside of it, right. yeah. but that burnt out. So shit. we're just, we're, I'm just too lazy to I go and grab one. I can give one I an extra. Get in all these LED uh, cocktail tables and stuff for them as well. So this was the first setup for the retro night. Mm. That's the one that's happening on Friday. Are, are you going to play on Friday? Yeah, or? Oh shit. On Friday, yeah. So we're doing volume two. Okay. And we did a... Hollywood, Bollywood night for them. So are you inviting us or are you not inviting yeah, us? Of course I'm inviting you. We'll pay the it ticket. Is. Don't worry. We're not, we're not cheap skits. <laughs> we're, we're not dicks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how does it work? So do you pay a ticket and then you, you like, how do so you get a like table? So it's like a buy BD uh, ticket and you get your free beverage with it. And then sure. uh, they, yeah, based on like if you're a, a couple or you have a group, then they just uh, book your table for you. So last time when we had our first retro night, we actually... So they have a courtyard that was which you just saw, and then they have two balconies on the top. So we had actually taken speakers and connected them up as well, so people were in the whole uh, mood of it. But they just uh, decided to come down. So even though we didn't have tables for them, they didn't care. They were just on the floor. So, but do you, I mean is it is it like a common thing here in Bahrain, like VIP tables and stuff like that? A lot of people like that. Yeah, but I think that's just for the initial stage. And once the music starts and they probably two or three drinks down. You have to move the, to the be, mic closer to you, by the oh, way. Sorry about that. Yeah. No worries. So they just end up, yeah, coming and they were all downstairs. So we had like a table of, I think, 20 people on the top and all of them just said, we don't want a table and they just came down to dance. So, I mean, I think they were feeling a little left out with the whole, you know, you're on the terrace part of it. They couldn't see the DJ properly. I, I'm stuff. okay. I mean, I find that interesting because in the UK, from how I understand clubbing scenes to work, um, usually they have the the VIP section sectioned off, either yeah. totally, and you yeah. can't see the dance floor, or or partly. Yeah, and they just have like a TV with the dance floor like yeah, showing. True. And the whole idea behind it is just to like pick up girls and like yeah. you know go up and a meet lot them. of people do that, but I think um, over here it's very different. Because I was I, wondering if if you if you can do that with your with your DJ set if you can like sell the ticket and then be like oh uh, 5 bd for standard and like yeah. i don't know 25 yeah, for VIP, vip whatever we actually did that at this place called studio nine. Oh yeah uh, we did that over there but it still didn't work out like people just wanted to be downstairs so do you think you could talk to the to the to the local bar no so that was the vip 20 bd unlimited unlimited what, unlimited what was it drinks and that people didn't want to pay the 20 bd for unlimited drinks no, they paid it but they wanted to be down Okay. So it was like, fine, we, we didn't restrict them to it. Unlimited drinks till 2 a.m. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So, so do you think it will make financial sense to you? I don't know if it would or not. Yeah. It, I don't think it would. If you, if you could be, if you could talk to the, to the bar owner yeah. and be like, listen here, I'll sell standard ticket. I'll sell like a VIP ticket too. Yeah. And you know, they get like i don't know unlimited drinks or or yeah. six drinks or half drinks for the rest yeah. of the night or I, I i don't know how you'd work the finances okay. out because from the business perspective right the only way that would make sense for them is that if 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 whatever you're giving them yeah is more or equal to yeah what okay. revenue they would get normally from the drinks exactly. right because i i mean at a at this place at mikasa itself we 
we do promise them a proper bar sales for them because mm-hmm. I mean to get in crowd otherwise I mean they have a resident DJ but then it's obviously like our crowd that we have who follow us they don't go there if we're not playing so we have tried to push them and in that the resident segment. DJ yeah. is hard working so hard he, getting yeah. that crowd <laughs> so so many times we've actually given him the chance to play it because he's come down from Bombay and uh from Mumbai and it's for him it's like um he used to play at clubs and stuff so to come in here and then you're just stuck playing to no one it was uh like we would see that pain in his eyes and be like you know what so we used to actually give him slots during our shows or if you get tired we're like you know what just take over because he plays that well and mm-hmm. it's just that he he's not you know very active on social media and stuff so he doesn't promote himself in any other way so we tried to do that and just you know get him on board for several uh, events so, so do you feel like do you, so do you so you feel like the the master of the craft because in, yeah. from for me who doesn't know jack shit about mm-hmm. music would be like dead mouse dead mouse i feel i don't know if it if it works in bahrain i mean like, definitely the whole like it? event and the lights and the yeah, video that, like like what we like i think what we saw at uh, for example afrojack when he came for bic sure the the setup that they did this time was just it was insane and i remember i had to rush out somewhere i didn't want to leave because De- it was that beautiful dan can you look up a dead mouse uh, uh stage is it dead mouse five or no i mean i don't know what he calls yeah, himself de- yeah times. dead mouse but it's it has a five yeah I mean that is fucking sick. It is. It is. Do you think like I mean uh, he's 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 not even a musician anymore. I mean he is a musician yeah. obviously, but he's almost like a graphic artist at this yeah. point, right? Especially that third image, the one with the huge like mouse. <laughs> the one on the right, yeah. That looks so sick. Beautiful. That looks so, so <laughs> sick. But I think over there, like, I think for these, you actually need proper <clears throat> stage designers. Um, I've not come across someone who does that, you know, as much. I mean, I've, I've seen show tech and I've seen music and lights where they have crazy equipment. They have crazy stuff. But I think stage designers, like how you see Tomorrowland and things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. their stage designs are insane. It's do you think like, something like that could work in like the Gulf countries? I like, think it would. It actually could work here. It could work here. I mean, because you have so many people driving down from Saudi, from Kuwait, from even Oman and Dubai. Sure. And it's, uh, if, I think like when they had, was it the, the concert that happened in Saudi? Was it mid, Middle East? Middle, something beast, right? Mm. I, when they had that, it was, uh, I heard it was a hit. MDL. People went crazy. Sorry? MDL yeah, the, the so MDL beast something. There's there's Tomorrowland. Then yeah. there's what is the ones where all the Goras go to? There all the white girls live at Coachella. Coachella. Oh yeah. yeah, right. And then there is uh, uh, Burning Man, Burning Man, which I don't know if you would if where that would fit in in in, I, in that world. You can I just think, type in yeah. Burning Man uh, to 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 Google search. So so. People are watching it on on video can see it, and people is listening to the audio. Uh, just type in Burning Man to Google search, and just show me oh. some images. I don't know if something like this could work in the Middle East. I mean, I'm not the first person who had this idea. I know that in Saudi, stuff like this has happened in the yeah. past, but it was always like hush hush, and yeah. you need to know somebody. True. And they had like 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 four or five trucks. No, what am I talking about? Four or five trucks that like they had like loads and loads and loads of trucks, and it would be like around this like Tire around area. the a- area. Shit. And then as soon as they see somebody coming in, like state yeah. or police or whatever, yeah. they'd like rush everyone to get in the cars and just drive away. Shit. Yeah. And they'd li- just like leave everything behind: the booze, the drugs, whatever, oh whatever, whatever, and then just wow. run. And that's, that's how. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I got it explained to me. How it works. I think something like this could work. I think something like this could actually could, work. Yeah. <laughs> can you can yeah. show me fantasy versus reality? This year is my sixth my sixth Burning Man. Go up, go up, go up, go up. There it is. That that image right there. <laughs> 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 K- 
can we post it? Can we can we take this image and post it on our Instagram? Like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll tag you with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool. With that. Girl, like you worried that the the, the the algorithm is gonna see her like chest and be like, nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. No, I, I think it should be. I think that's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Save that image. Save that image. I, or just remind me. Just remind me later, and I'll I'll put it on my phone. <laughs> Fuck, you know that's funny. <laughs> Can we see what other stuff is going on? What about outfits? Let's check out outfits. Since you're in interior design, and oh, outfits yeah. is totally separate to interior design. Yeah, right. But why not? Or maybe why don't we type in Burning Man interior design? I mean, I guess it's more like architecture, really. It's more of architecture. I think. Whoa, yeah. shit. Again, if you're if you're an audio listener, you're missing out. This is some <laughs> crazy stuff. We had actually done stuff like the second picture. We actually made these for Jumeirah. Those like those ceiling things? No, no, the second image. Second the, image. Those CNC cutouts. Next image, Danny boy and the man. Yeah. So it actually made these out of uh, acrylic Ooh. and we made it for i think if you check jumeirah the ramadan dome mm. we actually did that for for them over here in bahrain how much would something like that cost me if i want to put it here on the set um talking business to, son i think you could say like 55 60 or uh, that these yeah these are the stuff we had made for them shit hook me up yeah. we'll talk about yeah. it later sure right. yeah this this was the entire dome that so we had even done that whole light fixture so we have like 25 meter domes, 60 meter domes. I think you've seen it even at mm. BIC. So that's the dome on the top, the fifth image. Because I think something like that here, just to cast the shadow on the wall, beautiful. Would look really, would look really sick. So this was like everything that was done in house, and um, it brought in a lot of. I mean, it gave us a really good name for the company that time. So I can imagine. Yeah. Can you show me some more of the Birdie Man interior design? I want to see what other ideas we can steal. <laughs> oh shit, look at that, look at that. Like, what is that? Like a crown, I guess? That is dope as well. That is really fucking cool. <laughs> so I had this like idea, right? Yeah. And it was about the podcast set. And I was thinking there's a part of me that wants to go and buy these like container shit, container yeah. like, yeah things i don't know what the containers the i guess containers, yeah. and uh just buy like four or five of them may maybe maybe six and okay. fuse two or three of them together yeah right and then turn that into like a podcast set in the middle mm -hmm. of uh medina hamad or by where the tree of life is yeah right because the property yeah. and land there is, is like yeah, nothing yeah the only problem is obviously water electricity you yeah. need to do the wiring yeah but you can have just a tanker yeah. come in, take out waste Average and yeah, put sure. water in. And exactly. I think something like that, because then we could have like set designs like this outside for be beautiful for actually like, uh, especially for people like, like who are having like guests on so they can take pictures and yeah. shit like that. True. And turn it into a whole icon thing. Yeah, surely. Sounds so, good. That would be really, really dope. Yeah. I mean, there's some cool ideas that you can do with this kind of stuff. Fuck, you know, <laughs> it's trippy. What's that black box thing? That's cool as well, but uh, there's a black box. So how would I source if I wanted to, like as an interior designer, yeah. give me some tips. How would I source a mask like that? Don't mm -hmm. tell me go into Google and type in no, no, monkey no. mask. <laughs> Buy it online. It's possible. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't really know where to get that. Because I think something like that again to put on the wall, which yeah. <laughs> look crazy. That looks so dope. <laughs> I think I think a, a part of me is not thirty. A part of me is fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I shit of that. Sure. Um, yeah, show me that black box, Danny boy. Desert sauna for Burning Man. Fuck off. There's, there's a the there's a the black top. box. Just, it, yeah. yeah, that's the one. Fucking hell. Shit. Oh, it's interior design. <laughs> so, is there something happening inside, like a steam room or sauna? 
I think it's meant to be a sauna that's meant to be heated from the desert heat. Wow. Or I don't know how the, how that would work. Yeah, Inversion of energy. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a chimney. I can see a chimney. Yeah. And that smoke looks like fake ash. It does. <laughs> Fucking wild. So, who's your favorite interior designer? Um. I I I've never actually had a f f like my favorite interior designer, but I've just got like. There's. Shit, I forgot her name. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one person who I used to follow, and she was. Um, I just. That that's the the line I actually wanted to get into because I used to watch her a lot on YouTube, and it was back in the day. And um, she she's actually been called, and like people used to pay for her tickets and pay for her stay and everything just to have her come in just to buy furniture and set up a place. So it's not like she was building up as much as she was purchasing stuff. But uh, and then I think her her daughter took over as well. So it was I forgot the name of the company. Here in Bahrain? No, it was in uh, California. California, and, okay. Uh, she had like crazy designs and she would just sketch and like even if they were doing paneling, they would cut it at her spot, specifications, yeah. yeah. And it was uh, at like say in like three days or four days or like even if she gave the client like three weeks, she would complete it in like those three weeks and they would record everything of it. And that's something I've not experienced. Like that's the line I actually was looking for. Where you actually, you know, you're doing stuff at site. But over here, it's, it's very different. Like interior designing, I feel in the Gulf is, I mean, now hotel wise and stuff, it's very different. But in the Gulf, like being it, even in houses and stuff, you're generally like, there's always a delay for even the smallest project. There's always a delay in production. There's on always, the supply uh, end, you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Not on the supply end, it's just the, it's mainly the production that takes time. And it's because they want to take time. It's not because they they actually struggling with anything. <laughs> they have Lazy. all the materials. They have yeah. It's just you know okay. Call the client. Tell the client we're going to do it after you, a week. You know how 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 you can solve that issue very easily. No, not really. <laughs> very easy. Ask them to send uh, tracking information. I learned yeah. this trick through 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 some YouTuber. No, yeah. actually, what am I saying? I learned this th trick through through purchasing manager in Apple. Okay. And he was telling me. For every, it doesn't matter if we're ordering one piece of paper. There's yeah. a tracking code yeah. that we request from from the supplier. Yeah, and and I, I learned this trick with Alibaba because I would order like like test units yeah. of ma fabrics and stuff like that, and they'd always say like, "Oh, it's in the mail. Oh, it's this." And yeah. then we would say, "Hey, listen, um, you're 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 not even. We're not even going to put it in the escrow account. Yeah, until we got the tracking code. Exactly. So it's up to you." Sure. And I, I swear to you, it's it switched. In, it, it went from waiting like three weeks for like an item yeah. to f 24 hours. Wow. So try it out. Next time when, when you're like ordering stuff for clients yeah. and say like, hey, the client is saying they're only going to be willing to take to take your uh, uh, product yeah. if you're if you can supply a tracking code. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what <laughs> I think. Yeah. We're editing that, right? <laughs> oh right you don't <laughs> want that in <laughs> <laughs> oh god but yeah i think uh yeah i mean that's actually what's required because everyone does that nowadays there's sure. ikea there's oh you're worried from your customers being like hey where's the tracking code for that no that's name? fine I, I've, I've cleared out all my customers so that's okay, fine okay. <laughs> that uh yeah but i'm just saying like everyone does that nowadays everyone sits at home and they'll go through homebox or home center or ikea and just you know order stuff and go and it's now it's what click and pick up. Yeah. So you do that or you get your delivery or whatever. So everyone is tracking it, be it from Amazon, be it from uh, AliExpress and stuff. So I've never actually used Alibaba though. Not once. I, I don't know if it's. Uh, it's not know. easy. Yeah. I mean, it's it not easy. It's 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 there's a lot of fraudsters on it. Yeah. True. So um, if I was if I was in your position, I was doing something like major like equipment or stuff like that, yeah. I'd, I'd probably get in touch with like a specialist who does procurement. Yeah, true. Right? And preferably someone who, who is near the factory or wherever they claim that is. Yeah. So like you can go yeah. and check out that facility and make sure that yeah. the product is like... Yeah, true. Right? And they're not just using waste material or anything yeah. else to build it. Because <laughs> I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, lighting and like DJ gear and stuff on that. And the pricing is like unbelievable. Hmm. So I was like, okay, you know, give it a shot. But then I, I, I don't know, I always backed out from it. 
I mean, if as long as you buy it from Am- from from Alibaba approved, yeah, and they take a cut if you buy it through yeah. the Alibaba approved yeah. point, um, you're one hundred percent guaranteed on your money. Okay, right. So it's as as stable as Amazon. Okay. So even right. if it orders and it 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 doesn't like work or it's not up to yeah. your standard, it away it goes. Matter. Okay. And mm-hmm. the same is for people who are listening right now. If you're purchasing anything with an, first of all, you should, if you're purchasing materials, if you're purchasing supplies at volumes or scales for B2B, yeah. always set up an escrow account. Always, always, always. It, escrow account basically means that uh, uh, you and the you and the supplier have agreed on a price. Yeah. And so none of you guys can back out. The money gets held by a third party, which is the bank. Yeah. Right? Sure. And you you come with the terms of agreement and conditions of yeah. of how that money then ends up at his at the yeah. per, su- suppliers or sellers bank. Yeah. So what normally then happens is depending if you choose FOB or CIF uh, mm-hmm. shipping, it arrives, container arrives, so depending on the container uh, 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 facility, and depending on the relationship, blah 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 blah, <clears throat> they always require a signature. Yeah. To accept that container. Sure. So. If it, 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 there'll some people try to play around and tell you, no, we can't open the container until you sign for the container. Yeah. Nonsense. That's okay. bullshit, right? Sure, the, yeah. If the if you have equally as, as right to open that container, if it, if it claims it is for you, yeah. as the government obviously has the right to inspect yeah. what is in that sure. container, yeah. they can't just like <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, true. So so you can right. you can obviously open it. So don't listen to that bullshit. And uh, don't sign anything until you open it. You can oh, you can literally test the product, make okay. sure that the speakers, if you're buying it in scale, yeah. work. Okay. And then you sign it. And then after that signature, the money goes into the account. If you don't sign it yeah. because it's problems oh. or anything else, yeah. that shipping has to then go back to the supplier, not on your expense. Yeah. On the supplier's thing. expense. Oh, sweet. So. Nice. Yeah. No, oh, then it's fine. Exactly. But this so, is it's scale, right? Yeah. I'll take your word on it. <laughs> That's what I used to do. <laughs> what do you think I got terms like FOB and CIF straight out of my ass? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, think I, I need to start doing that. I don't know now. where you're with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm still thinking whether you know it would be a good investment because I mean I've I've seen a lot of stuff on Alibaba, and uh, yeah, I think I'll. Give it a shot. Wait, what are you looking to buy? Know. Open Alibaba. He's been talking about it for ages now. Let's see what he's yeah. what he's looking at. Murray. Thank you, Murray. <laughs> Alibaba Express, I think. It's either Express or the normal like one. You see a lot of ads as well on Instagram and stuff, right? Of Alibaba. Mm. So are those, are you saying like those are actually like... I'm, so there's two types of Alibaba. There's Alibaba yeah. and Alibaba Express. One is for wholesale. Yeah. And one is for like, it's like their, their version of Amazon. So type in, what are you looking for? Speakers? Yeah. So type in speakers, see what you find. I think you're, you're, you're not on the wholesale. Alibaba wholesale. Or that. Yeah, this is the wholesale one. Trade shows and shit like that. I think you might I have think to put. You get a lot of the QSC speakers. Oh crap! Oh cool. A uh, speaker waterproof EVA shell case for boombox, hundred pieces minimum. Okay, so you can get one of those like speakers, those portable Bluetooth speakers. I don't know if they're, they're any use for you, but that's like thirteen dollars. That's like uh, I don't know, seven seven BD, yeah. right? That's but you have to order fifty four of them. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you can request you can request testing products, right? But yeah, you have to pay extra for that. Okay. So they're not going to sell it to you at base price, right? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sir. Yeah, you can see like um, QSC. See what you're looking at. No, I don't think they have that. Actually. Well, know. that's it. What's that? We are ten. No. Maybe type in speaker DJ. It's, <laughs> or, 
It's just yeah, a cool suit. Yeah. Like I'm trying to think about how would like a non-technical person order large volumes of speakers. Okay, that's pretty big, I guess. The second one, right? Okay. Yeah. Or the third one. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about speakers. I don't know if $70. Like this isn't bad. Like even if you're saying, what, two pieces, minimum order? Yeah. I, I mean, these are mostly cars and stuff like that. Yeah. What happens if you look at speaker type? Uh, wait, 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 down, 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 down. There's speaker type on the left. Stage, yeah. Oh, we should have put in stage, yeah. We're idiots. <laughs> Professional audio, 100 watt. Is that a lot? 100 watt? No. 1,000 watts, sorry? 1,000 watts, uh, yeah. That's good. Is that good? I don't, I don't know. I mean, people hit like 3,000. So it's... So how much are they A lot for? of people use the QSE speakers because they powered so you don't actually have to get an extra amp and stuff okay so it works out a, a pretty well for people i mean okay because, okay we're we're okay yeah. we're thinking of different things though like right like the first image was a setup we had actually used for uh, the studio night yeah and it's powerful I'm thinking of, like we're That's thinking fun. of different images in my head. I was thinking like like stage speakers, like these huge motherfuckers that they yeah, have. So in, like even these, yeah. once you buy them, you can actually link them up so you get the whole linear stage setup. Oh shit! So that's why QSC is like the brand at the yeah. moment. Cool, 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 cool. Rock and roll. <laughs> I guess so, or we're just bad at researching. <laughs> I blame Dan personally. <laughs> <laughs> we know what's getting cut now, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's the one editing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. So, who are you then? Are you a, a, a designer or are you a DJer? Um, DJ or DJ, DJ. guy? Um, by day, I'm a designer, and by night, I think. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. You got to at 8 p.m., as you said. No, but then I'm up again for, for a show, probably. But I think it's like, it's, you can say at least every alternate day I'm on the console. I'm, mm. if, whether I'm at home or whether I'm out, I think, um, or there's, I'm downloading music, or I'm doing something different to do with music. So for me, I've always had that. I can't, like, if I wake up in the morning, music has to be on. I can't, I hate it if there's no music going on. So, so even if I'm working, I can't work without music. I can't design without music. And I've always had that, I think, from, um, I think in, when I was young, I used to study with music on. I used to find it quite um, difficult to do so otherwise. But, uh, yeah, You had to pick are. one, gun to your head. Which one are you? Left or right, where are we at? <laughs> You can't look left and right the same for them. I think a DJ. I think a DJ. Yeah, a DJ. I mean, that is what your Instagram is about. Yeah. DJ. Right? It has to be. Yeah. <laughs> I've stopped interior design for a while. <laughs> it takes too long sometimes to finish a project and like put it out there. But yeah. Um, you still didn't tell me how how the how the process of that business works for for the interior design. Does <clears throat> does do you play? Do you take a do you take a cut from the sale of the product, as in the couch or sofa or whatever? No. So if we do it as a complete turnkey thing then we generally charge a design fees okay so and then we do it. yeah let's let's act this out i okay. come to you right and i yeah. go hey you know what i just bought this flat blah 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 yeah. it's empty True. i need the, like the whole flat done yeah so if it's the whole flat done then we ask you based on your budget what do you want us as you cheap as possible us? i'm renting it out then we start off with the design fees sure we expect you not to pay sure <laughs> so we'll start off with the design fees and then you we once that's done that just if if you go ahead with us that design fees will be adjusted to your overall bill so eventually that does come to our company and then and know, how, how does the not, design fee get calculated by hours spent uh, doing the project so we say it like based on the square meters or the square feet based sure. on that we will be like okay fine we're charging you probably five bd per square meter and stuff and then sure based on that we give you your design fees if you're ahead to your you're fine to go ahead with that then we start off with uh, the design and then we 
generally do like just one change if it's required, but then we don't go on because there are some customers who keep changing stuff over and over again. And nowadays, I feel <clears throat> before it was uh, much easier to do interior designing because everything was like drafting and you know sketching. And now with 3D coming to the picture, and everyone just looks at 3D. They don't really care about the layouts. They don't care about dimensions. It's a lot like. Like even if you come to the Gulf now, everything is three D. Mm. So they actually like an interior designer is not an interior designer anymore. An interior He's designer a 3D design, is yeah, a three D visualizer, or things like that. So the first question is, oh, do you do three D S Max? Okay, but that's not like there's so many technical terms behind it as well. That when you do AutoCAD and you do things like that, there's so much behind interior designing. It's uh, a lot of technicalities. So like which many people and I've experienced it as well where many people once you come out of college you're just you know you're lost in the market you don't know actually where like where to start off with or stuff that you've actually learned in college you're not actually implementing back that's life space. yeah yeah that's life so a lot of like freshers come in and they're just lost as to like are we like okay we want to put a panel on the wall how do you fix it so they'll just show you the drawing of the panel and they just stick it to the wall, but they don't actually know how it's being fixed or when your sheet is coming on it or how it's being painted or how it's being, you know, uh, like in India, it's very different. Like there are times people use wallpaper on a panel and they put that, but you and Bahrain is different because they just put wallpaper. So it's, uh, I think from place to place, it's very different and yeah. No, I'm just thinking in my yeah. head. I'm I'm just thinking in my head because because I, I get where you're coming from with the 3D yeah. scan, but does that mean you have to look at the floor plan, or does it mean you come in and you do a a whatever those light reading scan is? You know that the yeah. special camera. Yeah. Where they then. So a lot of them do that nowadays as well. I think they have a lot of. Um, the, I mean, there are some people who are who have worked with. As in fact, uh, there are architects who base everything on sketching and on layouts for mm. them they don't even believe in 3d but then when you have a client who comes in and you know keeps on insisting for 3d then you're just stuck on that whole 3d uh point of view i guess it makes sense but, for 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 yeah. turnover right because yeah. if i'm looking from the perspective of the client right i'm yeah. thinking okay if i can get these 3d design like yeah. a rough show of it True. the quicker i can put pictures on the market yeah the quicker i can get some interest exactly right yeah, the, because true. because if i show just drawings right yeah. they're, they're, people are gonna be like oh what the hell is this because that that's what there used to be so many times like i mean companies used to actually sit down with materials sit down with brainstorm sessions and that's something that i miss out on like sure you you don't have that anymore because now people are just stuck to the pc you're, if you're an interior designer you're just stuck on your desk just working and doing 3ds and 2ds and you know sending it to the clients coming back changing stuff there's nothing of you know interaction with the client and stuff because now with pinterest and things clients are looking for stuff themselves so your role as an interior design to give those suggestions are just like out the window i never understood this because my mom who who, who always like bought and sold yeah. she she was an entrepreneur for all her life okay. including buying and selling properties yeah. doing this doing that always busy yeah. I always asked her and I was like, why the fuck do you not like hire an interior designer when you have that property? She's like, I don't want to waste money. I don't want to spend budget, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I can go and do it. And I, I kept on saying to her and I was like, you realize you were going to take at least two weeks yeah. to <laughs> find everything that you want. What? And it's not going to be exactly what you want yeah. because you're not going to find it. Exactly. So you're going to just have to live with it and then you're going to set it up and then you're going to go rent it yeah. or you're not buying it and you're renting the, the yeah. furniture, right? Because sure. You, because it's either for for a resale of the property and she would always say yeah but you know it's not going to take me two weeks i can do it in three days and then <laughs> <laughs> three weeks later <laughs> ah finally it's done <laughs> no but that's what i that's why i keep saying there's uh there's such a vast uh, difference from interior decorators interior designers architects and stuff like interior designers actually deal with even you know paneling with partitions with probably breaking down a wall mm. but interior decorators is more of like you know just furniture and, and curtains and stuff like that so that which is why people don't don't understand the difference here like in dubai people get that like because there's so much going on and it's so quick so people want stuff in a hurry but here it's like you know people are relaxed they see it in there like okay, fine i want a couch 
start off with the couch or they save up that money and you know probably buy the couch first then they base everything on that couch this is something i never really un- understood is that because there's so much property in bahrain right yeah. there's three times as much property as their population yeah. living here it's something yeah. ridiculous like that and i've always wondered because there must be furniture rental companies here in yeah, bahrain yeah, i think so that that you if you own if you have the property you pot you purchased it you yeah. you contact an interior decorator yeah get that furniture from rental yeah. bring it in and then for like one or two weeks just kick the ass of the real estate agent yeah to just show as many people in as possible yeah take any bid that's acceptable for you and get the fuck out of it yeah, true. right yeah because I, I i never understood this i never understood this there's so many people i know in bahrain who have listings for very expensive apartments yeah and they can't find a tenant sure. including me by the way because yeah. i own this 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 oh, okay. uh this apartment right here wow but uh i mean half this building is empty sure. so half this building well because three yeah. times as many properties sure. right and there's and why would you why would you buy or, or rent in in this building yeah. that's like five six years old yeah if you could go and rent from a new build yeah true. right and exactly yeah so so i mean that's the that that's i never understood that and the only reason i'm turning this into a studio is yeah. because i was like well i'm not gonna fucking pay yeah. rent exactly. <laughs> right? yeah, and then leave this place empty what yeah, the fuck exactly. right exactly yeah it's true i mean i've i've jaffer by the way i i spoke to a friend of mine and he was telling me he's paying a hundred and Fifty BD a month, okay, for an a two bed for no one bedroom apartment. Yeah, wow. yeah we're, exactly. <laughs> where's this place? <laughs> uh, uh, um, you know where the highway is? Yeah, you know there's like the back end where that highway is. Yeah, it's that it's it's in in that blockage. Oh, that way. Oh. Very strange. Okay. Yeah, Pl- there's like a lot of prostitutions as well, but that's okay. Jafar. Yeah, it's Jafar. Right, it's everywhere. Yeah. and uh, so. She she was telling, and they have a pool. Nice. Well, it's, I, a, it's a two bedroom. It's a one bed. Oh, it's a one bed. Okay. It's 150, but like I, I'm not sure. So don't yeah. quote me this, but electricity, water, I, I, I don't think is included. Okay, fine. Yeah, possible. Not. Possible yeah. it is. Possible yeah. it isn't. But yeah. So so she was telling me it was either yeah. So 150 a month. Sure. People are desperate. Yeah. And she was telling me her building is only occupancy is around 60 percent wow <laughs> i mean sure. yeah true i mean it's uh because many times people said that like the market dropped and then things like that but because i was looking at places in jafer and i think they all started at 250 for a studio and uh i i was actually going to find like finalize on one and um because i had an amazing view of uh, i think it was close to where Buff, Buffalo's was. Okay. Like, yeah, so it was just there and it had the full stretch of, like, so you could see Oasis Mall and stuff and you could, like, it was that whole stretch of road. Okay. And it's I fell in love with the place. Her yeah. building is nowhere near that nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was must be on the other, yeah, the other end, right? Yeah, there's, there, so, there's no, yeah, view. <laughs> no view. <laughs> That's why it's one. No, but then uh, this place was, uh, it was beautiful and I, I was good to go ahead with 250 and... Uh, Dan, can you show up? What, 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 what we for for video viewers? I mean, if you're audio, then well, you look it up yourself. Uh, can you go on Property Finders and let's see what what we're working with in Jafer? Let's see what's what's the lowest bid. I'm just interested yeah. because she said she she found the property through a newspaper. Oh yeah, because many people get that. Um, they find it on expat. Yeah expatriates.com and and then just filter it by by lowest i guess yeah 160 not too far off yeah can we see how that 160 looks 160 square meters isn't too bad to be honest 160 square meter yeah not bad so yeah so it's a studio right yeah Okay, that looks like it's a fresh paint as well. You're getting a lot, to be honest. You're getting fresh paint. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. And okay, okay, okay. You get some view. 
So let's see what 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 what's around two hundred mark. And that's inclusive of water and electricity. Well. That's even inclusive. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you know. <laughs> Because I reckon you can get a two hundred place yeah. and negotiate it down to one hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's yeah. You if can. you if you're willing to sign like a one year contract, yeah. definitely. A lot of them do that. In fact, mm -hmm. I mean, like a lot of agents as well. They they'll post one, but then they'll take you to like five others, and and that's how I found my place. In fact, you know? how much are you paying now for when you film? I'm asking. Uh, so now I'm paying two fifty as well. Okay. For one bedroom, which is fully furnished, inclusive of forty. BD electricity. Sure. And uh, it has a pool, it has a gym, it has. In Jafar, or where are we talking no, about? No, so uh, close to Adhura, mm -hmm. but closer to. So you know the Jasmine's building? Yeah, it's close to that. And uh, and I never wanted to go to Hura. So I was looking at Exhibition Road. I mean, at uh, Jafar. Jafar. She was, and the agent was like, you know, we have a place at Exhibition Road. And I was like, no way. My mom was there. She's like, you have nothing to lose. Like, and we have out. the next meeting at three o'clock so just you know check it out and I went there and I saw the place and I walked into Hura and I was like I'm still not comfy with it and the minute she opened the door of the flat the amount of natural light that came and I need light I need mm. natural light and um, I fell in love with the place I just saw like I, I was happy that because now everything is open kitchens and I hate open kitchens sure so for me the I whole apartment smells yeah <laughs> so that, and then we have we ha I have a dog as well right so which my brother's dog now but uh he's staying with me so f to to keep him out of the kitchen I had to keep yeah. talking um, uh, Dan show me what the most expensive thing is since we've seen the cheapest sorry my, I, yeah. I need to know now I need <laughs> yeah. to know but yeah so your dog so your brother has a dog yeah and he's staying with me so to keep him out of the kitchen it's like it was quite difficult when you had an open kitchen, but he learns it now. Fuck wow. off. Fuck off. Is that for rent? Fuck off. That has to be for buy. Uh, unless it's yeah, a whole I building you're renting. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that this is. No, this yeah. has to be buy. Yeah. This has to be buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the saddest playground I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, this, this isn't right. Let's, yeah. let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. This is. It's for sale, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why he put it under rent. Even the six thousand one, I, 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 what is it? But that's I bulk. I think that's for like yeah, yeah, that's bulk. Yeah, so. Okay, so the first expensive one we've seen is the penthouse luxury Jaffair, two thousand six hundred. What what's what's it looking like? I mean, I don't think I I. I, I I don't think anyone would pay that kind of money for this place. Yeah. For 2,600? No way. I mean, I did see one that was, I think, a fully furnished two or three, no, four, four bedroom, I think. And it was a, a villa that had like a crazy pool. And I mean, this is, I don't oh. think this is, has a pool, does it? Like a private pool. No, not a yeah. private pool. Private yeah. A private cinema? What's the most expensive area in Bahrain other than, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know if, 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 if this area counts. I think Seif is more expensive than this area, no? Seif or Jafar. Seif or really is the most expensive? They have, yeah, like the Sea View penthouse and with private pool, I think, yeah. Sea View penthouse and private pool, but it's cheaper by almost a thousand, a thousand yeah. BD than the yeah. other one. Let's click on it, Dan. Let's see what, 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 it's three bedrooms, not four. Ew, ew. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of natural light. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's ugly, though. That's ugly. So I'm not going to say the contractor's name, but I met a guy who has a, who has a doctorate in, I think it was economics or engineering, okay. and he works for one of the biggest contractors here in Bahrain. Oh. And so... Um, in fact, I think it's the same contractor that built these buildings here. Yeah. All right. He he said to me that he wasn't being paid for almost a year. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You're like, yep, we heard this story before. <laughs> and I mean, he's got a fucking doctorate, you know? Well, so so it's not yeah. like he's 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 a moron. Yeah. And uh, I talked to him about it and I was like, okay, so how did he settle the bill? How did he settle accounts? He said, oh, um, I got an apartment at an enormous discount from the wow. contractor. 
You're like, wow, yeah. right? You're like, oh, cool. <laughs> and I was like, you got an enormous discount? And I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah. And I was like, so you paid for it? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. So not only did you not get a paycheck, yeah. but you now put money, more, <laughs> more personal money <laughs> into this. And he's like, you don't understand. I, I'm going to be able to rent it. And that will have like supplementary income. And I was like, how long have you had the property? It was like five months. And I was like, how have you rented it out? Like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and like like i don't I, I don't know i don't know and, no, and i talked yeah. to him a little about it recently and he was telling me any property in bahrain that is older than 10 years is considered old yeah right True. so so they're not built like like to last like 25 yeah. years 40 years True. Yeah. right exactly exactly I fascinating think, isn't yeah. it because i think i mean i know a lot of people who including myself who weren't paid properly from being in, like in companies now there's and a lot of black companies yeah and it's just um i i don't think they think of it from your perspective of how you have to live your life or how you have you know bills to pay or how you have rent to pay you gotta and eat but you, yeah. you just have to make that clear to yeah. people i yeah. mean this is i've this this is what i always say is that is that it you know before you get into a relationship or in bed with with anyone yeah. you got to make it clear you know yeah I, i can't i can't do this for free yeah right and it's the i mean it was like i've seen people being like getting so depressed because of that and i mean what listen if it's if it's one month your 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 payment is missing right maybe the business is struggling maybe sure. this maybe this it depends on your relationship with with that guy and or girl or whatever yeah. and it's your call but yeah. if you if you miss two payments and you're not and you're not looking after the first one for a new job yeah then you're, you're stuck yeah i don't know what you're doing True. and i don't understand why you're working a job that you're not getting paid then because for them for many people it gets difficult to like just move out i mean for them like they know they can see another month going by without you know probably not getting any income and, and they like they know they have to fight for their money yeah i understand that so it's been that but tough, why stay like, with an employer for three months and not getting any uh, the paycheck for three months then go on like on go on a fucking newspaper and start using your phone and calling people yeah that's true as well yeah. I, i'm sorry right no, i mean fact, some yeah. income is better than no income yeah right yeah and i true. i mean like 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 i always i i, I always get I always like like remind myself that the guy who who washes the cars outside yeah he makes two bd a car <laughs> right true he does 10 plus cars yeah. that's 20 bd a day yeah in 10 days that's 200 bd yeah right yeah. that's 400 in in in, in, in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right he's making yeah. 400 <laughs> bd it's a shitty job yeah It's hot and you're fucking work and you're working your yeah. ass off but it's better than fucking work a job yeah. that you're getting zero yeah very true it is it is that the the same thought went through my head once yeah and it does happen that way i don't know i i've it's 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 i've uh, like like i don't know i i've i've worked i've had my first job i think when i was like 14 15 something around there and like even even as a kid i remember my dad would always like make me do work there was always work right there's always work to be done true so I, i i never understood like like not fighting for what's what's your due yeah no i mean i mean i've had people by the way on the show yeah who afterwards like i've given them like consultation advice blah blah yeah. blah blah i do this for content yeah right this is what i get out of exactly. it exactly but uh, they they would come outside with me and be like oh can you come for like a meeting and i'm like for a meeting <laughs> and i was like what what do you mean he's like oh to like share ideas explore kind of stuff and i was like yeah i was like son <laughs> like buddy listen if 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 it's not for content then it's for money yeah i'm not gonna sit with your 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 team yeah for three four hours and <laughs> <laughs> and, and work out concepts no, course, and strategies yeah. for them true, yeah. and and it, it it like i could see the shock in his face <laughs> and i was like <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this is what no, i mean fact, yeah. Yeah, i mean what are, you, what are you on about what are you on about it's yeah i mean that that's what i was wondering like even if you say like content it makes it makes sense but then doing that it's um yeah, that's what i said to him there, yeah. i said to him listen if 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 we're going in and i can bring my crew in yeah and we do a do whole something. like video around yeah. it i can use that that's yeah. that's what i'm doing yeah 
But if you're saying, no, I don't want like my competitors to know my ideas. I'm like, fuck off. They're not, first of all, your <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's weird. It's so weird. And do you face that a lot with like in, from your interior design thing? Do you get like a lot of colleagues who, who mm. try to cherry pick? Yeah, I have had that actually. Yeah, really? Yeah, I have had that. From your boss but, or from a colleague? From a colleague. Oh. Yeah. What's worse, a colleague or a boss? Well, equally. I think colleague okay. is worse. Really? Because I feel like a colleague, it feels like a, like, like a personal betrayal. From the boss, if you work with a shitty boss, you just yeah. think like, oh, he's, a shitty, boss. he's <laughs> a shitty boss. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. No, but it's like, I've, I've actually been there where it's, uh, where you put your, your efforts into designing something and then eventually they're just like, you know, oh yeah, we came up with this idea and you're just like pushed at the back. You're at the, you're at the meeting, but you just shout at the back and it's like, has nothing to do with you. Yeah. And then someone else goes and gets like a, a promotion bonus. or yeah. bonus or and something. And you're just sitting there thinking like, I've been here for so many years. They've just walked in. But then you know how you always have. Karma, you mean it comes back? I wouldn't say karma. I would say ass lickers in a company. Sure. And uh, that's what happened. Like uh, you actually bring someone into a company and then, you know, they start off at the lowest salary. They're just ready to come into the country and they come in and then they fuck you up. <laughs> it is at the end of it. It's like yeah, but you know, you somewhere else in in a span they, of like they four, understand five something months. that you don't. Yeah, they understand yeah. that don't go, don't get between a man and his food. That's yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! But that's that's one thing I can never do. Like I even thinking about it makes me uncomfortable. And I I think it's just the way. I, 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 know, I would I, say I would never take I, I feel like taking credit from someone's work or ideas I think is yeah. just idiotic from the sense that you're not going to be able to duplicate the process <laughs> 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 so I just I just I never understood that I never understood that right yeah. and and you want to like you want to gain attention based on your own merits yeah right? exactly yeah. right Otherwise, they'll have this cognitive dissonance because they'll think like, oh, this person is like really good and does yeah. this and this. And then <laughs> sooner or later, they'll it's be just, like, this yeah. is, that's not him. <laughs> what happened? Oh, man. No, that's happened a couple of times. But don't, why don't you stand up? Why are you being like, hey, you know what? Because I feel, to be honest, like... Ashamed. It's not even ashamed. I just feel it's a waste of time. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, even karma. I've, I've actually seen it happen to people who have mess around and stuff but it, it doesn't affect me and I, I think that's something i've learned from my parents where they've always told me like that there'll, there'll always be someone to pull you down or there'll always be someone to like you know, like till date i've never kept a best friend yeah it was just like one friend that i was really close to was uh the filipino guy how old are you by the way 32 32 yeah. but after the age of 15 there's yeah. no such thing as best friend but even from young i've never had it yeah, i've okay. never had like I've actually thought, and these are questions like even my own parents have asked me like, okay, so who's going to be your best man? Whoever's there um, the day. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just looking, okay, I was like my brother. Like, no, it's fine. But I've never, like, I've never actually thought of that. Like I've never, not someone I would confide in or someone I would like, you know, probably share stuff with. I've never done that. Go to your mom, go to the priest, go to whoever no, you need to that That's there. I'm just saying like, you know, you always have someone that you would probably like share shit with. It can be the worst stuff. It can be the best stuff. It can be girl stuff. It can be, I think, really? So you've never, okay, so we're on the same page then. That's but, but I have something <laughs> that you don't, though. I have this. That's the right. show. Yeah. Right? So yeah. If, 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 That's why I'm you on it. Right? right? So, so <laughs> if, Shout I, out, yeah. if, 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 if for whatever reason I have a psychosis episode and I start talking like <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this would yeah. be then my outlet, right? <laughs> Yeah, and true. there are people who come in, into the show and sit down and wear the seat that you're sitting in, and yeah. and they just like unload. They're just problems, and I'm like, yeah. I, I'm happy to listen to it, but I'm also not your therapist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's fact. Yeah. Right. And so there, there is that kind of like counterbalance where you always yeah. have. It's very strange. It is. Yeah, and we've had like other people who come in and they've said stuff that we just have to like cut out completely and delete the footage. <laughs> like, Shit. yeah. <laughs> Like, okay. yeah, just yesterday, I think I was up to like 5 a.m. just because <laughs> I was just worried that I'm just going to get a knock in front of the door <laughs> and the hard drives are going to be taken. So that bad? Wow. Okay. I'm not even, I, I don't want to put, I'm not going to no, put work in it. I'm not, not going to say it now. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, 
So so he's he did he did like he did hit my paranoid brain. Wow. Yeah. That's. But what, so what about why don't you like do like a whole DJ thing, right? You get like all the DJs of your community together, yeah. and, and do like a once a week, once a month, like podcast or Twitch or something yeah. like that. Yeah, we we were actually discussing that. In fact, I think two days back. Yeah, two days back because uh, now there's a there's a company that's trying to set up, uh, and I knew this guy from when I was a kid. And uh, after I came back, he he was always into events, and uh, then he just changed his line and he drifted off. But then recently, he's gotten back into it. I think a month back, and he wants to like bring down artists and he wants to do stuff. So I told him like, these are places that this is the place that you can actually do it. And um, like I've never actually. I mean, we have such a huge Bollywood crowd here and a fusion crowd. And I told him like, you know, I'm I'm up for the challenge to just bring that in and. There are DJs that I worked with, even in Dubai, who are insane Bollywood DJs, and um, we're trying to see if we can even start off that. Where you, because it's always where you have one main artist, and then you have a couple of you know the local artists, and I said so that's a good way to promote people, and I think that's what like I want to actually start off a group that is back with our old school DJs who have that kind of music and that feel to have you know a different type of crowd. It doesn't have to be always clubs. Like recent, even now for the retro night, there's a DJ who used to play ages back, and he used to play with the resident DJ of Bulls and Cavallos and stuff. And he just stopped because, like you know, there was always family issues and things like that that he had to get into, you know, working and things like that. So now he actually took that up, where we got him back into the whole thing of DJing again, and. I enjoyed playing with him. So it do was, you do you want to then start like a, a a DJ agency? I was thinking of doing that. Yeah, I was actually thinking of. I wouldn't say an agency, it's just to have a good set of DJs that where even if we do shows, we do shows together and we split it and way out. It's like just that. I don't want it to be. I think it it could be really powerful for like for like the newer DJs coming in yeah. who who can't get a listing or a place. Yeah. Right, and I think if sure. you if you present yourself as like, I don't know, like the agent for these kind of these yeah. kind of like smaller guys, yeah, and then organize them gigs and stuff like that, right? I, yeah. I think you're gonna build a lot of goodwill, yeah. And as long as your cut isn't like enormous, yeah, true. like fifteen, maybe yeah. twenty percent max, yeah. I think there is there is Hopefully, space yeah. for it, true. right? And then you can definitely work yourself up slowly and slowly yeah. and slowly and slowly. That's a, yeah. I, I was always wondering, like, you know, the, the bigger talent houses who, who bring in all the like, like A-list talents yeah. into Bahrain. Yeah. Why, why is not the pre-show like some DJ or something like that? Yeah. Right. I think they do that actually nowadays. I, I mean. Do you get what I mean? From, yeah. Like, why don't you, but I, like in Oman, I think that's what used to happen. They always would bring in like one main artist, but then they have a local artist playing to the crowd because that's your that's your pre-show oh, and oh. it was always. Or if I was like, if I was the event hoster, right? Yeah. Because I know it's not like, like every single day is like packed. Yeah. At the, at the especially, well, I forgot what the new one is called, the new event hall that they have. Dan, you know mm. what I'm talking about? It's called, it's something M. It's, it's. It's like like they they have like the bigger bands who come in and and yeah is it is it called that the one your your BIC it's it's all white right yeah and they have a bar and you can drink as well oh yeah at the entrance I think. at the oh, entrance yeah, yeah yeah that's the amphitheater yeah the oh, amphitheater yeah. because I was always wondering because it's not like it's booked out every single day of the week yeah. so if you have like a big name coming let's say Friday yeah then Thursday. You do like local artists, yeah. but you sell as like a total package. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because those local artists are happy to be performing. Exactly. So they'll take pennies to the dollar. Yeah. And yeah. and it, it, that way you can you can you can like satisfy the crowd a bit more. Yeah. And be like, hey, not only are you gonna get to see the main artists that you wanna see, yeah. but by the way, on Thursday is this person, on Saturday is this person. Yeah. And you're gonna get more revenue from the booze. True. Well, what's that? Yeah. They do that. On Thursdays as well. I didn't because when I when I went to see Eric Clapton, it was just Eric Clapton. There was no events before. There was no events after. 
the days, by the way. So I don't know what day I went to see him. Let's say it was, a, I don't know, it was Saturday. There was nothing on Friday on the amphitheater. At least it didn't give, it didn't yeah. give me an option when I booked the ticket. Yeah. It didn't list anything. No. Which but I were, think, there, were there performances before Eric Clapton? No. So it was just his show? Just or, his show. Oh. But true, 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 true. But I'm just thinking in my head because I'm I'm guessing with 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 him specifically, maybe he didn't want his brand associated with any other local yeah. artists, and that's yeah. why they didn't do like a deal thing. Possible because yeah. they would obviously like like market who yeah. they'd market him right. Yeah, true. And then they he made he, they made it been like no we just or maybe his team or his PR team was like no you're not gonna put any posters with any of the other yeah guests before or after yeah. just has to be his yeah. just uh, just him just Eric Clapton yeah because mm -hmm. I heard that that he killed it he did People he did he did a really good job he yeah. did a really good job the uh, it, funny enough the stadium even with it, Eric Clapton being on wasn't packed oh. Wasn't packed. Sure. It was full, but it wasn't like packed. Yeah. Packed. And I think the amphitheater, the VIP rooms that they have on, yeah, the, on the top, see. top, that's really expensive. I think, right? I'm not too sure. I mean, I did. I saw it recently because I always wanted to. I never went there, in fact, and um, I just started checking it out for Tiesto. And I thought, okay, like you know, look at it. But that's when I saw the rooms, and I was wondering because I think they allow what ten to twelve people there max. Mm. So. Yeah, I wanted to see what the rate was for that, but it wasn't showing. Well, let's let's definitely keep in touch in, yeah. in the in the long term with, with because I'm trying to get on one of the event organizers on the podcast. Okay. All right. Because I want to see if there's any chance that me and them can work out some sort of deal that that whoever like a list star comes in to Bahrain yeah. that yeah. I can get like a first shot at doing a podcast with yeah. that person. Right, and then then I'll bring up also to him the idea of hey, you know, why don't you do like packages? Yeah, like for yeah. local DJs like yourself, exactly. right? I, I, or comedians, or or I don't know what else yeah. could be like if entertainment format. Yeah, I think yeah, even comedians like a lot of people looking for that now, but I don't know where. I think there was a place that used to host it. But we had you're thinking of nights. I think night, it's called night Owl? No, Night Crow Night. Sergio. Ravens. Raven's Nest. Probably. Yeah, he's the one who who hosts them. We had him on the yeah. show as well. Okay. So. Yeah, and we had Abu Jade, who was who was maybe the the unintentionally funniest man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the planet. He was brilliant. He he called himself the. The the Bahrain. I, I, oh. <laughs> See, I had to pause myself. <laughs> he calls him. He he said at a time he was Bahrain's shittest comedian. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if if he still he if he still wants to hold that title. If he still <laughs> is associated with that title, <laughs> but he has some of the funniest oh, stories shit. I've heard. <laughs> really. <laughs> Like like asking people to pay like I don't know fifteen BD for a comedy show when nobody knows you. <laughs> so, like, man, can you imagine? So she's a DJ. Like can you imagine? Like you're just in a new country, you don't know anybody, and you're just going on Instagram, <laughs> like fifteen BD to see my set boys <laughs> at a coffee shop oh, with no God. alcohol. Oh, which coffee shop was it? That. Raven's Nest. That's the coffee shop. It, oh, was that? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Because he, that, doesn't, he doesn't play places with alcohol. Oh, okay, fine. All right. Yeah. Which again, <laughs> fifteen BD. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Unlimited coffee. Is Unlimited it? coffee. Yeah. Unbelievable. Do you have you um, ever done in a non-alcohol uh, set like at a at a, at a um, I don't. Is it even possible? Uh, no, I've never done it. At, no, I did play once for uh, a wedding, a communion like that. that had. And a communion. Uh, it was a communion, <laughs> and we GDM for the Lord. <laughs> it was uh, it was a communion party, and um, I think yeah, because that time Ramadan was going on, so she just couldn't serve alcohol, and we told her like you know try and have it afterwards. No, <laughs> and no, she just said no. We'll go ahead with it, and I think it was the first time because we had a bunch of friends over there. And uh, if she listens to this, I know she's going to hit me for if I'm going to take her name. But yeah, she had it and 
it was the first time I saw everyone like sit on the table together, eat their food, come and dance for like two, three songs. And they were like, yeah, we're done. Like they had every course. They had like, they had their starters. They had their main course. They had their desserts. They drank Coke and Sprite. And they just left. <laughs> and what I did just, you expect? <laughs> I, my brother and I just looked at each other. We were like, yeah, because we, we already expected it. Because yeah. our crowd, I know like for them, they'll start off with like one, two drinks. And then they're on the floor. And then they're thirsty and they're just having more drinks. There's water is barely like flowing. Yeah. But it's it was that insane. Like our parties would go until like till the managers actually have to kick us out of the even sure. if it's a banquet hall, they have to kick us out. But then this was like the manager was shocked. He was like, "Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> we have enough time for the next event." And <clears throat> did you did you ever have trouble with the crowd? Like them trying to like reach out to your set or your equipment? Or... All the time. Really? All the time. What if more guys uh, or gr- more girls? I feel like that's a girl thing. It's a girl thing, yeah. But and they will come to you. They either want to touch the console or they want to come in. Like, and I think this is something that hey, DJs sweetheart, can you put face, like this song you know? on? And it's always that. And yeah. they come and they'll ask you for a song. And I think that's where people. And I keep telling them, I'm not a jukebox. Yeah, that's the only line I use to them. But they still don't get it. Yeah. it's like you might hit a BPM of like 128, and then they'll suddenly come to you and say, "I want this song next," which is like 96 BPM. And I was like, "We can't just drop down that much." And I hate that. I, I think Can you all just DJs say like, it. we don't have that song? No, because I've tried that once. So I'll be like, I have to check if I have it. They'll be like, you're a DJ, you're supposed to have it. <laughs> it's like, it Sorry, doesn't I work don't have that every way. song in the yeah, world. Exactly. This, I, I would and use that line. I would just be like, we don't have you it. You can. You can use that line. They still don't get it. We don't. Already... Or, or even better, even a better line. We don't have shit music. <laughs> just shut it down. Just shut it down. <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> no, I think we did this for, I was playing at, I, forgot. I think it was a yeah I think it was a wedding and someone comes to me and he's like can you play Toxic by Britney Spears and I was like no no <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't like there's no way I can play it and he kept coming to me and he's like I need you to play the song and I was like no he's like and then that's when he's like because my boyfriend and I are waiting for it <laughs> and I was like I'm still not gonna play it <laughs> I can't do that and uh yeah that's uh boyfriend he, come up what's your fucking yeah. problem <laughs> And they, they gave me the dirtiest stare and they left the place. And I was like, it's fine. It was fine with me. I didn't, I didn't care about it much. It, yeah, it's, it's not your livelihood. It's like yeah. your fucking, yeah. I don't, I, I get and, you. I get you. And that's what every DJ feels like. Because you can't, I mean, like some of them will come and ask you for the stupidest song. And or even if you've played it, they want you to come and play it again. And that's just like a big no in my, <laughs> when it comes to me playing. But. So some things I would normally do if, yeah. if, if I don't know, I mean, <sighs> we're going back in time <laughs> when, to, to piss off, because we'd always like, so me and my friend group, to call each other friends is an overstatement. Yeah. I think to call each other like feminies is, yeah. is the correct term because right. it was yeah. just torture, it's just always torture. Shit. And I remember that having like a really buzzing night at the at the club and blah yeah. blah 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 and i was like i know how to ruin this <laughs> so i went to the dj and i gave him like a 20 uh 20 bd 20 quiv- equivalent of 20 yeah. bd and i was like listen all i want you to do is just play whatever the shittest song you have in the next track to kill the mood right <laughs> that's all i want and, and they would be like sure <laughs> i literally as soon as he yeah. said yeah sure I just like hang around, wait till he starts playing it, and then I'll just walk yeah. out and go, <laughs> go to the different next location just to be a total <laughs> dick. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, would, we would always find out ways just to like like make each other just miserable. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't think I'll have to invite you for this now. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. The whole crowd. Yeah. I remember it. Like it, the whole, I think he was playing like it Smells Like Teen Spirit or something like yeah. that. The crowd was just like on fire <laughs> and then he just played some some new age garbage <laughs> <laughs> and you could literally see the whole crowd going huh <laughs> <laughs> oh shit and he wasn't he he didn't say anything to the crowd nah like, he, he, just, he just went like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah he didn't give a <laughs> shit <laughs> it was a small fucking venue no one cares <laughs> yeah. yeah oh yeah because i think i like it happened to me, yo, I was called to a place to, as a resident DJ, 
Mm. And uh, he was like, why didn't you come and see the place and whatever? And I was like, fine. So he contacted me on Instagram. And uh, I went there thinking, you know, it might be a nice place. He's like, it's a new setup and whatever. And I want a resident DJ. We have all the equipment. And I said, fine. So he's like, do you have your console? And I was like, I do, but I'm not, you know, comfy with using it at the club. He's like, fine. So uh, I did enter the hotel and it was, it was really like a weird hotel. So Seriously? I saw it and I was like, okay, I'm not getting a good vibe. But I said, probably the club is different. So I entered the, the club and um, it's just like, it's a full round. So I walk in and I don't see anyone. I just see a bartender, uh, a waitress. I see a bartender. I see two pool tables that are just empty. And I see these tiny computer speakers in the corners, right? Brilliant. <laughs> and I thought, okay, maybe that's for, you know, just ambient noise. Day, yeah. And I walked all around the place and those speakers are all over the place. And then I see the owner sitting there and he's like, come have a seat. And he has like eight women with him. And I was like, this was in Bahrain, yeah? In Bahrain. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah, like, so I sat down and I was like, what is it? He's like, I'll give you good money. I need you to play from, from nine to, to six. Sure. And I was like, that's not going to happen. Like, I, I don't mind till two. But I was like, like, where's your equipment? And he's like, yeah, this is my equipment. <laughs> I said, like, I can't do it. And then I see all these fake notes on the floor. And I was like, I understood what type of place it was. And I was like, it's not going to happen. And he's like, no, I'm telling you, the money is good. And I was but, like, I don't doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> I, <laughs> take care. And I just walked off. I was like, there's no way I could do it. It was because, I mean, we, I have experienced stuff where like billiard balls are come flying across the room and stuff because they've, they've got into fights that way and it's literally like missed our face and just gone to the back wall so from that experience i don't even want to get involved in so do, what, what would be like your number one danger hazard if you would see in a studio like if you'd see like wiring wiring not like hanging out from a ceiling or something like that you'd be like no, no, yeah no, no, no. and i have ocd so for me it's even worse <laughs> like okay if i see something out of place i can't stand it even if it's during a setup if I see a wire come in between or an extension, I can't stand it. Because I know things always tend to go wrong also. And uh, it, was, it was done by my friend for one of the events. He decided to plug in his charger and he pulls out my console cable. And it's just like the music just stops. And I'm wondering like, what, what happened? The fuck you know? happened? <laughs> and this guy's under the and table. He's on the table just texting. <laughs> he's under the table and he's trying to connect his charger. And I'm just looking at him like, what the fuck did you do? And he's like, uh, oh shit, was that me? <laughs> I was like, dude, like there was, a, and there were spare points. He didn't plug it in that. He decides to pull out the cable and I was just like, let it be. He's from Algeria, by the way. And yeah, no surprise. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> surprise. <laughs> but yeah. Fuck, you know, <laughs> fuck, you know, fuck, you know. What, what is the best club that you, you would, you would recommend? Um, the ones that I work in. I think the ones that if, you're saying where I've played at? No, no, no. Just in okay. general. I thought the answer is going to be the ones I work in is the way you're going to say. Yeah, no, the, the uh, best club is always the one I'm in. Uh, no, I think the best club I've experienced till date over here in Bahrain was uh, Club 360. When it okay. was like really good before. I don't know about how it is now, but uh, Club 360 and Madness were like crazy. It was uh, it was doing really well that time. And uh, they had like even their decor and stuff was beautiful. So where would you recommend me to go? I haven't been in years and years and years. I think now even the new Wranglers is beautiful. Okay. The new Wranglers is beautiful. Uh, they've changed it. So before it was like dark wood and stuff. And now they've done it out where they have a VIP section and a VVIP section. And I think that's a place that you should uh, check, check out. out. Yeah. On, you, have a sh you have a show on Friday, don't you? Uh, I have a show at Mikasa though. That's at Mikasa. Where, yeah, that's in Adlia. So okay. I'll just spot. come to just yeah. check out your set. Sure. Yeah. That'll be good because it went on really well the first time. And we're hoping that it works out this time as well. Don't so, ex don't expect me to stay. I think longer than than an hour because we have a, we have more shows on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. just try and come in late. Yeah, I'll, I'll literally uh, just come yeah. for an hour. I'll have a beer and I'll just check it out and be like, oh, it's pretty cool. Sweet. It's pretty cool. Because yeah. I I'll, mean, that's what we wanna we wanna bring in. We wanna bring in just the old stuff back where, because literally we had so many ladies just walk in and we were happy with it because they enjoyed it it was like ladies night for them and they were like we didn't have to be we didn't feel bothered like they were on their own do you do do you do then free ticket entry for for ladies uh because that would benefit the bar more than you yeah right yeah that does so for us but but the crowd that we had they were more happy to even pay that because they were getting their first drink so they're sure. like even if we go out we're paying for our first drink eventually so but if it's ladies night yeah they do have ladies night but it's mostly empty 
Really? So, yeah. For them, it's mostly empty because I think they're doing it on the same day that several other clubs are doing it. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, when yeah. ladies go out, they want to go all out. They don't want to sit in a place that's quiet and just talk. They want to probably like, you know, I, I've seen people go crazy at Wembley's. Really? Yeah. Ladies night at Wembley's is good. It's like, I think four bucks and you get unlimited cocktails, unlimited, uh, only that beer is not counted. So okay. it's unlimited cocktails and house spirits. So like most of the girls that we know are always heading there to Wembley's and stuff. But uh, ladies I, night, I think at this place won't work out as much. I remember somebody telling me once that that 80% of the spending done, it's that sh- stupid 80-20 rule, yeah. right? They hear everywhere that 80% yeah. of the spending in a club is done by 20% of the people. Yeah. And I thought that was so, so interesting. And because especially in the UK and London, a club is 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 valued by how many women are inside the club. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and sure. so they're very, very like, like, pres- like, especially the higher end of the club, yeah. they're very like get more and more difficult to yeah, get in. True. So I remember I've been in one club where the ratio was like one to ten. One sure. guy to ten to ten wow. girls. But Lovely. like it, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable the amount of money I saw being spent there. Uh, I used to know a dude who who really lived up to the to the Arab world. Um he used to buy like balls of champagne wow. and then just give it to like like because he would be like, I'm a Muslim, I don't drink. You yeah. know, that old passage, right? <laughs> they're like, well, okay, just, whatever. Buy it. <laughs> yeah. And he just literally just buy it and then like give it away to like a table and then request a coffee. And wow. <laughs> yeah, sure. that would be like like <laughs> I was. I always thought to myself, like, why are you? Why are you doing this? Why do it? Yeah. yeah. Buy yourself a coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is this really necessary? And he was like, oh, I just need to tell the bitches that I got money. And I'm oh, like, shit. there's other ways. Of doing that. <laughs> just give them the money. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's what I was thinking. So, yeah. anyways, yeah. yeah. And it, it it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous the amount of like girls in in those places. I think yeah. I mean, over here, you know, if there's a girl at your table in Jafar, it's Sure. It's just like, yeah. She's but, working. Yeah. Yeah. But in Dubai, it's it's very different. In Dubai, you need to have the money for that. You but need but to... in Dubai, people are, it, it, it's so weird to me because there's certain terms and words that you can't use in Dubai. Yeah. Like I was in the elevator in a hotel once and um, and this this late, I don't know how it happened. I think she she was talking to me about something. And then I said that I'm, I'm, I've come here to for, to for Dubai just for like an Oregon trip. Yeah. And then I looked at her and I was like, what about you? Are you here for holiday or for work? And then she looked at me like strangely and said, no, for a holiday. And then I realized in her head. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, how else am I meant to ask that question? True. Like not question yeah. if, if you're a prostitute, question <laughs> if, are you here for a conference? Yeah, am, exactly. am I to, like, how am I supposed to raise that? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I got in trouble for that.